uh, like the net diff. Yeah. I always call it WLAN zero, whatever. Yeah. And then beyond the net diff, you have a bunch of links, right? So yeah. you have like 2.4, you have, you know, maybe five, mm -hmm. and you have maybe like a six, seven gigahertz link, mm -hmm. right? You might have two, five links, whatever, like, you know, but that's. I mean, those of, are ports effectively of the bridge. Uh, no, the port is just WLAN zero, right? No, no. So right. So net if, if you think of bridge without net devs, yes, kinda. Yes, if you think of it in bridge context, those are ports of a bridge. But what you're saying in a is, way, yes. Yeah, but the problem is that in a regular, in a traditional L2 bridge, all ports are equivalent. What you're saying is that your ports are not equivalent. So you actually have a filter. No. So what happens is that you have now. Can, can you uh, show the station side which may put a Yeah. So, so I was going to say like I was. Uh, yeah. So Maybe like two so one now one here one. you have uh, like each one of those is a set, kind of like a separate access point, right? Right. right. Um. Look at that. You've been drawing that logo. For I a while. actually yes. have it. Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm surprised I can. Um, but now that it's not on the screen, you see. Yeah, that way to use the Okay, we got it. Can you move the camera a little bit over so there. it shows this side? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So so you can have a station here, right? Um, like, I don't know, your phone or something, right? Uh, whatever, the, the 5G folks would call it the UE, <laughs> the user equipment. Right. Um, and it might connect on, on two links, right? Yeah. And then multicast doesn't matter where and how it receives it. it right. It, yeah. Or or you might have uh, another phone that you know knew about Wi-Fi six, so it can connect on six seven gigahertz, but it doesn't know about Wi-Fi seven. Okay. So it can only connect on one of those links. So five. Right? Okay. So now if this guy subscribes to some video stream or some you know multicast stream, right? Then you're you multicasting from which direction? Yeah, from, yes, from the access point to, to the network, you know, like okay. to the to the end user, right? Okay. They subscribe, then the bridge will do G G IGMP snooping and mm -hmm. it would say, hey, you know, this MAC address, I don't know, let me call it, you know, zero one. This this thing would learn zero one lives behind here, right? Right, and then this thing would say, oh, okay, I got multicast, mm -hmm. I have to send it on all of them. But it's completely pointless because this thing only lives on the six seven gigahertz. So this is not L two multicast. This is an L three multicast, right? It is L two multicast. It's it's, no, it's L two. It's all on link. Yeah, but then like it's right. not zero one. You're you're sending it to a multicast address. Your MAC address. No, no, you're not sending it to zero one. But you learned that zero one is interested in a specific well, multicast. Oh, because IGMP snooping, then you're sending it out to an L two multicast address. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So he had a join. You're saying a join came. They joined. Like yeah, this guy joined a group. Joined yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Or they joined. This joined another group. Or something. Okay. Right. And so you're saying the problem now is that you're going to multicast it to every. I'm going to send it to everyone, and I'm going to waste all my precious 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth um, with this stream because I don't have a, diff a way to differentiate. So of course I can do what VX landed and say, okay, you know, within here. You'll create different... I can create another map yeah. and another, you know, network. Map I don't see how you can avoid that, right? Because the problem here is the WLAN. No, but but look, if you look at the bridge, the bridge actually, like, if you set it to multicast to unicast mode, then it will learn per individual station and actually, like, multicast. Correct. Correct. So, translate so, to unicast, correct. right? But I want something in between. So now you have at the bridge level, you have like full granularity. You do yeah. each individual string converted to to unicast. Yeah. Or um, the bridge can do like you know port granularity, where you can um, send it to like you know what's WLAN zero, which is the port from the bridge's point of view, right? Yeah. But well, what we're thinking is that maybe there's a way to teach it to do like sort of a sub thing, you know, entity some entity granularity. Where instead of learning per MAC address, you learn per some other entity that we control. So we would say, you know, this thing, this frame was received from this entity. Um, you know, basically we would take, you know, the, the IG, all the frames that we push push up. No, no, so, so, so got that. So, Sorry. Okay. So the, the 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 approach that was also taught the line is if you are capable of learning in you the should bridge, use in, the microphone in both the so in both the unicast and the multicast. Uh, the database. If you can learn 
in addition to the net device, some piece of information from that net device that yeah. the bridge to just keeps track of and hands back down. Yeah. So, so before yeah, we can listen to it here, I guess. Um, the, I have a question before we go there. So sure. you said in the unicast case. In, um, in the case where you do multicast just, to unicast translation. Forget even multicast to unicast. Just say it was just unicast. No, in the unicast case, I don't, like it's easy, right? I know where it's going. But how? That's the question. Because the bridge doesn't know. It. So to bridge, the only down port is WLAN 0. Right? Yes. So the fact that there is a 67524, 2.4. Uh, that's known to only yeah. the WLAN zero yes. level there, right? Yes. So the right now, yes. So the, you must have a map already in WLAN zero that says if I'm going to zero one, you're going yes. on link number X, right? Yes. So or the link bitmap. Basically. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I think it sounds like expanding that to do the VXLAN trick sounds like the easiest thing to do. No, but then I have to do all the learning again, right? I need so, all that learning code again because no one. Yeah, yeah I have to and copy paste the code that does looking at the the you know that does the snooping, right? Does did VXLAN actually get multicast support? No, it can't. Yeah, th that is the problem. VXLAN never implemented this no, because no. it's hard. I'm not saying I'm not actually saying take the VXLAN code. I'm saying you'll have to end up building that map again because the pro problem. See if if bridge zero. That's why I'm, I'm asking about the unicast case. In the unicast case, if bridge zero had the ability to say direct this packet somewhere else, then it's easy to expand bridge zero's learning logic to say, or it's a filter at that point. Right? You're basically filtering and saying, yes, I would have sent a multicast to these three downlink ports, and I'm only going to send it on one out of three, the bitmap that you were talking about. Yeah. But if bridge zero doesn't even have that bitmap. Yeah, but give it that bitmap. Oh, but then uh, you've solved, you've changed the unicast model as well. I'm saying if you go down that road, then you're, yeah, okay. So that's my point. If you go, if you change the unicast forwarding model to say that bridge doesn't just talk to one net dev, but actually talks to a net dev per link, if you will. Because well, that would be the easiest way to do it. No, that doesn't work. No, for other no, reasons, no, no. But so, because, yeah. Yeah, yeah, management and. No, no multicast. Management, even multicast, because. If you do end up sending, I don't. Can you guys un un? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? If yeah, I'm you can the comments okay. there, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you if you were to do multiple net depths, which is something we no. did consider, then if you actually get multicast, you get into a hot mess because then the bridge will send it to all three of them, but we can't just send it out on all the three links because they need to have on a Wi-Fi protocol they need to have the same sequence number so that if this guy receives both of them. He actually knows, like, to drop. No, one, no, but that's a that's a bridge forwarding decision, right? So what would happen? So so consider how this works in a data center switch. If the links were not, uh, sorry, if links were, if you didn't have this complication, if this was a data center switch, you would do exactly what I'm talking about. The three of these would be ports. Right. The bridge would be a bridge across ports, and your multicast membership would be a refinement. So you can even do filters. You can say. Um, you know, if I'm talking to the six traffic, yeah, yeah. then the filter will filter out ports zero and one because we know that there, there's no point sending it over there. Right. So if you went down that road, then... No, but that, there you don't have this complication that you need to link it back together, right? In Wi-Fi, you need to link no, it no, back I'm together. No, no, but that's a forwarding... Oh, I see. The, and you link you, it back by had, making it a single device? You know, if you had here another I see, I see. thing, right? And you get the same frame here and here, Right, it actually needs to be. You would send it out, right? But then you need to actually know that this is the exact same frame because otherwise, this person here receives. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Them, I got it. Right, and you can only like tag it, you know, sometimes in the hardware or sometimes in the wire so what, stack, right? Because you don't here. It's an able to, you know, it's an Ethernet frame. Yeah, yeah. I so, got it. so you don't have an identifier that it's the same frame. So and you're talking about this is a wireless sequence number, right? Like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. on a the wireless, wireless protocol. Wireless sequence number needs to be assigned and. and and it needs to be the same, right? But if then you have a decision here, you get ten more frames, and here you get don't get those, then you know the sequence numbers get out of sync. So, so I'm hearing, mess, right? I'm hearing, uh, so that you're going to re-implement bridging in WLAN zero is <laughs> what I'm hearing because I right like so you have two choices. You can either have a new bridge type that's a, a WLAN bridge. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, a bridge type? So. Yeah. 
because you were like it's what you said uh, change the bridge so no so what i had actually posted patches for, for this five years ago the idea is in the receive path from wi-fi into the bridge you receive the mld or igmp join which makes the subscription in that path up to the bridge you add a piece of information that is opaque to the bridge for the wi-fi stack it identifies where the join came from the bridge just keeps this in addition to the vlan zero interface and in the mdb um, it accumulates multiple because you can have multiple joins and on transmit you hand the information back so down OIL has the output but that, that's interface. my point though. What, that's already what you do, right? Because if you do multicast to unicast, then the bridge already has a forwarding vector that's per this entity on the other side, right? Well, that's true. It doesn't care about WLAN zero anymore. The port essentially becomes the actual entity on the other side, right? Because this, that's how this, multicast because to this unicast metadata works. is carried through. Because that is carried. It's not metadata. It's just the MAC address in that case, right? Yeah, so I think what he's saying is... But what he's saying is that, or what you know, we, we also thought about, was that if you want an intermediate model where the metadata is carried through and that becomes the port, because... Yeah. So I think he's doing the same yeah. thing. I think, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think the Mac... So what you're saying in the FDB is the MAC address, which is converting the multicast to unicast. He is saying, uh, adorn the FDB with some metadata right. so that uh, no, but that, that's what the I'm saying, though. Mac and, that's what I'm saying, though. Right? Yeah. You were saying, like, the FDB only knows about the port. And I, yeah. I'm saying that for the unicast to multi, multicast to unicast, it already knows about, you know, being a different yeah. FDB with the end thing, right? All we want is, like, a third model of the No, FDB but hang on. Right? But even there, so something in the, like, a regular bridge FDB entry is a port index, right? It's Just not it. anymore. It's yeah. a structure with... A bunch of oh, things. that's right. This is the jury thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or one of those guys. Yeah, okay. So since it's a structure, you can put anything you want in there. Is fundamentally kind of what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Right? Okay. Or so what, then, what, then, what, then, what, what happened to your path? Well, right yeah, the, I added a few lines to the hot path and the bridge, and that was a no go on on review. <laughs> so yeah, it never went anywhere. But that's what I was calling. That's what I'm saying. That's a, a wireless LAN bridge. Well, it would also solve VXLAN because you can use the same. You can completely remove all the learning code from VXLAN if you have this. Like, because you can pass up an identifier, that identifier can identify the tunnel in VXLAN, and then you just throw away all the bridge copy in VXLAN. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I would support that. <laughs> okay. I, unfortunately, I don't have any. <laughs> yeah, that that's fine. Help. But, but, but. You know, you understand the problem. It, it sounds like the cleaner way to do it. And, I, and I, of course, right, it is going to make an additional set of checks in the hot path for the bridge, yeah. right? So, but one option would be... It's already there for the multicast to unicast. You just have to say, like, convert that into a check. Is there a special thing? And then... But that's going to be... That, that check is now a new thing, right? No, no, but you can... There is already a check for multicast to unicast. So if you convert that check to be... Don't check for multicast to unicast, but check for oh, oh there's special else, handling. Something that I and then can behind in, the yeah. special handling, yeah. you can check like which kind of special handling was it? Multicast to unicast? Was it Wi-Fi this thing or was it the whatever? Then your like your top level check for the case that you don't hit this path remains the same basically. Um, that's what I'm saying. All I'm saying. Is that yeah, maybe we can it combine. Have to be that expensive. Yeah, maybe we can like the, eliminate the, some other things from the hot yeah. path so we have a few instructions. You know. I mean, there are actually many other things you could expand this to, right? Because there are places where you have subports. That is exactly the idea. This is a subport. Yeah. It is a subport in a sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's really what you're trying to do. Is here, I, would, like... I would use a bitmap of the links as a yeah. subport. Yeah. But you know, whatever anyone else wants to use doesn't matter. No, and this is getting more interesting as you know the 800 gig and 1.6 tera devices start coming out. The other side of the house will want it as well. <laughs> Because the they will you're you're looking at it from the I have precious links and I have how, how do precious I use bandwidth it? here. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. And, and therefore the link is is yeah. precious. Yeah. Um, the data center view of this will be I have links that are so fat I can't use them, so I want to be able to partition them and create subports out of them and only use some lanes or something like that. Right? I might uh, have a device where I'm doing eight to one or four to one out of a single port. And you kind of splice it physically uh, into different. It physically, there yeah. are people who do that. Okay. Uh, so, so um, 
so there may be, yeah, yeah. So I think, I mean, I would say this is a good, elegant yeah. solution. We have a few comments in the chat. Okay, sure, yeah. Build the bridge with TC. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Jamal? <laughs> no. no, it's Alex. Okay, it's Alex. close enough. <laughs> Sounds like link aggregation group on the bridge side. So I'm not sure what that is. The opposite kind of, but uh, yeah. The opposite, yeah, yeah. That seems like it's the opposite. Okay. The, yes, is it, if you look at it like 90 <laughs> degrees sideways, then yes, but yeah. Well, I guess what you could do is you could make WLAN zero a lag device, and a then a, lag? a link aggregation group. Oh. And then yeah. say that, oh, I'm going to select one of those subports. Yeah, so. but that doesn't help either because in some cases you need to send the multicast on two or three because not everyone is on no, all no, the... No, no, so hold on. So I, I, I don't know if this is what is being proposed. I think the way I read it was you make 2.45 and 6.7 ports, then you aggregate them into a lag device called WLAN0, and then you plug that into the bridge. So you solve all of the problems we were talking about because now, because it's a lag device, you get to see that common packet because the lag will not replicate it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, mm. uh, but then you you just push that a layer into the lag. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think I think the previous suggestion is cleaner, though this one may be. Well, you would then then you would have the learning in the lag device. Again, no, the learning would still be in the bridge. So, so because the la lag will only make a forwarding decision as a group, right? The learn is still in the bridge. The bridge will say, I'm going to send it. Then the lag will say, No, you're not going to send it to each of the. Oh, yeah, but, the, but how would the lag know? Yeah, the lag needs no, like for multicast traffic, it can be on one interface, two interfaces, like all, oh, yeah, all, all three. The same problem. You have yeah. the same problem again, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just move the problem up. Yeah. No, it's the same problem. Yeah, you're right. Or you would have to create a lag device per group, per <laughs> distribution group. Right, but uh, then you have the same the yeah, problem with the Wi-Fi yeah, yeah. numbers again. Yeah. yeah, one way or the other, yeah. you have a problem. Like unless you do. No, I, I think that that previous suggestion sounds like. The let me goal. let me bring up the patch set. <laughs> <laughs> I would push it again and say, and I would say push it also in the context of maybe call it a support forwarding. Uh, system and we something. can list all the use cases. Yeah. I mean, we've yeah. got here we've got like. Um, and you know, for for this case, for instance, which is why I would make it a bitmap, right? Because here, you I, I think a bitmap is fine. In general, a bitmap is fine because it's no just the U sixty four or something, yeah. right? right? I mean, it doesn't, that, doesn't have to be anything specific. You're not going to have like thousands of subports. Oh, no, you no, might no. as well bring them all up to the upper layer. Right? For like, me, a U sixteen would be U fifteen bits will be enough. But, yeah. Um, for you know VX land, you might need more identifiers, but. Yeah, so if you want to use it for VXLAN, you want it to scale to the number of endpoints. endpoints which could be thousands. Yeah. But, I mean, that, so that's just the, a question of how we design the underlying handling, right? It doesn't really need to affect the hot parts. It doesn't need to affect um, anyone else. So It'll change your, if you want to make a unified design, it'll change your subport data structure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm sure we could come up with something that, yeah. That, yeah. Maybe what David had was actually good enough for Wi-Fi because it was just aggregating some, yeah. some so the, next data. So. What, what I had ended up doing was that in the MDB, it would just accumulate the, the subport information in a, in a kind of a list. Mm -hmm. So you would have an, an entry per station or endpoint in VXLAN. So you can, it would, like, so because you, you received, yeah, yeah. So for Unicast, it's only one always. But if you receive more than one MLD report, the bridge accumulates the, the, all the subports yeah. from all the MLD reports. I mean, you could build an expandable, uh, the kernel has support for expandable bitmaps, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or X, X, yeah. Or so, but, well, you do the X-ray and then the bitmap on top because yeah, yeah, yeah. for what you need, you also just really need a bitmap. It's just that the yeah. bitmap is huge. It's really right? big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you want it sparse. And sparse. Yeah. And sparse. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. That sounds great. Do it. All right, we'll do something, I guess. <laughs> Easy. Uh, one question we have to the uh, Yeah. What's the reason for not having this logic in WLAN 0? Why do not always have a bridge? Because then, if you add the logic in WLAN 0, you have to replicate all the snooping code. 
Yeah, and uh, we are also trying to because for for IGMP snooping, you have to again like you know build the data structures, have the snooping code, look at the frames, understand what happened, okay. and you might have I don't know you might have even mismatches, right? You learn something here, you got a memory allocation failure, so you kind of forget about it, but then Bridge learns it again and it works. And I think you get a messy situation yeah, that way. Yeah. To have all the market logic in one place. Yeah, to place. have the snooping things in one place, yeah. Thank you. Okay, okay, I understand. Yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> uh, there's also some, so I'm here as a user space person and we have people asking me to move the MLD and IGMP snooping into user space. And if I have to write a backend or something, for each device type, that's going to be rather annoying. So I rather deal with the bridge once and give the information to the bridge, and then the Wi-Fi just does what it needs to do because the information is there. You just write it in BPF, and then uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's also a security surface because this is handling packet data and yeah. yeah. So there's another question here: What happens if there are multiple multicast subscribers on one channel? Is it still converted to unicast? So the the suggestion here was never actually to support to convert it, or not necessarily to convert it to unicast, right? So if you um, if you have like this subscriber here, if it's just one, maybe you know you want to convert it to, to unicast. That's kind of a separate decision. But if even if you don't convert it to unicast, you want to only send it on this link because that subscriber is only on this link. Whereas if, if this is a subscriber, then you need to send it on both of these links because you don't know which one he's listening, that subscriber is listening to at any given point in time. So uh, but you don't need to send it on the 6.7 because there's no one interested there. So it, it's orthogonal to whether or not you convert to unicast. Though if you convert it to unicast, you don't actually care anymore because then you do a, you know, you actually address it. Not, it's not effectively, if you do convert it to unicast in multilink, then you would just have a unicast frame for the MLD here and that would mean that you basically just give it to your hardware and say, you know, transmit it to whichever link that thing is active on is, is listening to right now. So if it's converted to Unicast, it all becomes much simpler because you have hardware support to do the link translation and the link selection and you know whichever link this this phone is active on, that's where you transmit it. But um, the 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 problem wasn't that you you know, want to convert it to unicast. If you wanted to convert it to unicast, you'd have the support. The problem was if you wanted to not convert it to unicast, but still send it only on a single link. Does that make sense? If, if you do it right, then you have the information through this mechanism to decide what to do on multicast. Like, if you only do a bitmap of the bands, then you don't have the information and you're still stuck as before. But if you have a bitmap of stations, then you can do magic and determine right, if okay. you... Right, okay, so what you said earlier... Yeah, that's the, that's I, the second I, I step. I was focusing on the bitmap of the bands, but if you were to do a bitmap or a list of the stations, then you could also do things like rate selection and figure out like what bit yeah. rate should I send this at. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's so reasons to make it a station bitmap rather than a... Yes. Uh, So I, you know, sounds like we have to work together to uh, get this stuff pu pushed and integrated and see how the wireless stack pushes up learning information. I mean, I, I haven't, I've never actually seen your code. Can you add it to the, yeah. can you try to find it? And, it's and it doesn't matter. It can be cleaned up. It's proof of concept, I guess. Um, but, you know, that way we are, at least we have something to look at. Okay, so let's see. Did that? Did you take any notes there? Oh yes. Good. Um, thank you. Where did my? Where did my other window go? Here. Okay. Um, so that was actually the next agenda item here. <laughs> I'm assuming it's fine to copy that link to meeting with. Yeah. The link? Yes, yeah, so that's in chat size and copy things. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay.
do we need anything else on this or do we conclude that we have some way forward to solve this and we just need to do the work and push it? Any other thoughts on this? Okay, if not, so I guess we continue with the next item. Uh, I think Yoni, you brought that up for address frames. Okay, sure. Problem. I get the. This is not working well. It's turned off right now. Yeah, I, I don't really have much about the four address case. Uh, all I got was a question asking, well, I'm uh, pointing out that uh, there's apparently no major functionalities, functional change is required. Uh, I'm trying to there, figure I out. I mean, I don't think it works right now because we, yeah, yeah. like in the, all the link, data structure reshuffling, we didn't really consider that. So I actually put a patch in to refuse configuring for address with multilink because oh, I was oh, I see. it I would see. have like null pointer dereferences across the code because we use like def link station and some other things there. The code is just, it's just, I think it's just a question of getting the code ready and someone willing to test it. There was no specific, so maybe the question came up because I explicitly disabled it for multilink. But you know, I, I believe, I want to believe that I wrote in the commit message that I did it just out of kind of an abundance of caution because I was worried that this would be completely broken and have you know, major sort of security implications or something. But um, I, I don't see a fundamental reason that this is problematic unless um, you know, we might need a, a separate hardware feature bit because you know I don't know if link address translation will work correctly with four address frames on all the different hardware. Um, that might be a problem, right? Yeah, I just need to figure out. So this is a case where address one is link address, address two is link address, then you have SA and DA. Yeah, so address three and four are not translate or, well. Because there, there are be... because there are interesting rules for the crypto in uh, in. In yes. the standard, right? So, so that's that's. And you, what, one issue here is that four address uh, for uh, use cases are not described in the standard at all. That's true. So, but that um, how much? The... Well, and that means there might have not been full consideration of security impact for the encryption in a multi-link case. So, yeah, there is the standard side of that, which unfortunately I don't have an immediate answer on what's the current state there it did come up I, I do know it has come up in discussion and standardization so that's one part in addition to the implementation yeah but that should be okay and, right i mean address three and four are, are destination and source maybe so, so it's the so what's should included not be in translated in, well that's but one part what's in the ccmp aad and nonce those things uh, uh, right, but there I, you should yeah, have SA the MLD yeah, addresses yes, for S, A1 yes, and A2. Yes, SA and DA should not certainly SA, be. SADA shouldn't be yeah, affected. I, I, I hope that's the way it was written. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that, that's one part. Uh, the other one is, uh, at least, this, is this only for, what's the use case? AP to station using, so station using for address frame or? Both. For, a, for AP, AP and, and AP station. as well. Well, it's basically doing bridging yeah. behind a station. Oh, okay, so always between an AP MLD and non AP MLD. The only. Yes, the only case we support yeah, today okay, is, okay. is okay, because so we got rid yeah, of WDS. Right? So, of course, IBSS still uses for address frames, but sure, forget about it. Sure, yeah. Um, oh, okay, so this is to allow link layer uh, preaching for a non for, for a station type of device when yes, using ML. Yes, normal ML solution. Yeah, okay. And yeah. It, then, yeah, I mean, ML, whether it's a non-AP MLD or, or a normal station, a non-MLD, <laughs> Um, it, it's, yeah, I, you know, I think it would be a question of whether it would try to do address three translation or something. And there are the special, um, use cases for, for, uh, null data packets, right. That are kind of implementation defined in Mac edit 11, um, to, to probe, like, can you do this? And 
to set up the link and things like that. And that's between link addresses now. Right now, right. it's not implemented properly. No, no, but it, that, 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 it, that's what it would map to an MLO between li it should be, link well, addresses on one of the affiliated. Presumably, yes. I mean, I, I, I think that's actually a decision we can make. But yeah, that's I actually mean, interesting. Is that cross no data pair from a spec perform? Because I, I, from I a don't spec point of view, I think that the NDP the the would be you know link address, right? Yeah, because I, a, I see no point in using an MLD address for null data for data frame. That use case doesn't seem to. I mean, for for the specific discovery case, I guess it would make sense, but uh, that that's not that's not actually not even protected frame. So I I'm a bit hesitant yeah. on that front. Yeah. To, to be honest, I would probably want to see a protected frame being used. Instead, well, I mean, we could define like but, our own yeah. vendor action frame with protected. Yeah, that, that's what I'm kind of thinking. It, right? Yeah, maybe. Well, I, I don't know of that at least. But I, I think the the I don't think it matters so much. I don't have the code in front of me right now. But um, the reason it's using these frames is just to kind of probe if it's supported or something like that it's not like it, i don't think it has a lot of security impl implications but i yeah i don't have it in front of me right now was there a specific question that came up or was it just because i disabled it and... no it was just uh, pointing out that uh, hopefully it doesn't require much so uh let's see no understanding is that no major function this function is changes are required to enable ml so yeah it's i, I think it's just confirming that uh, that uh, it could be done without significant. Well, yeah, probably well, it's just verifying that there, there was no specific reason other than something rather straightforward that it was. No, the specific I'm reason assuming. to disable it, from my point of view, was just that I did not want to deal with it at the time, and I did not, I, and I just didn't have time to deal with it, and um, I was worried that because the pointers are in, you know, the way the data structures are. The way the data structures are laid out, I was worried the pointers would be that would be null or you know something weird would happen, and uh, it was just simpler to say though. No. Right now, I don't need this code, so there's no like no underlying semantic design or something that would say like this should not be supported with multi-link. As far as I as far as I know. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yep. I think that's all all for this one. Unless someone has anything else, I guess for anything else for preaching or for address or <laughs> this area, I would assume at this point. I, I think this was the only one, let's see. Well, we have the receive side. Yeah, uh, yeah but yeah. For, for transmit side, we don't. Yeah. Um, Do we want to go the RX multicast RX first? I can move that up, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I was just about to copy that. Oh, what happened now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I actually think someone was looking at it. Vazan to someone. Um, I mean, the RX duplication, deduplication. Um, it shouldn't be hard. I'm just not sure if there's any, will any ha anyone's hardware do it directly or driver, or is there a reason to do driver versus in the stack? I mean, I need to do it in software, I think, I think, but. I, I'm, I would assume there has to be firmware implementations coming up that do it there. Why have to be? <laughs> well, I mean, because that fits in the architecture of some vendors so much okay. better. Fair enough. But I mean, like, as an example, we are providing you Ethernet frames out of out right. of the so hardware. Once you, so yeah, once you have a header conversion, so you you, you won't it. be doing this. Well, I mean, meta information is you there, could, but but, yeah. but it will give you Ethernet frames. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be done in in firmware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think it's just an implementation issue. There's no. No, um, yeah, no particular consideration here. 
But uh, to your question, so I guess we need to have an implementation in Mac 8 to 11 for. Well, I don't even have one in hardware sim right now. So hardware yeah. sim will do the, the the multiple link sending. Okay. Um, I did an implementation for the transmit side for Mac 8 to 11, but it's very basic and it's probably not great. It has some implications with the sequence numbers. It kind of relies on everything working. So you might not want to use it in a product. But for hardware sim, it was kind of good enough. Um, also, it depends where and how you assign sequence numbers in the first place, right? If you do that in, in the device, then you can't do the du duplication of multicast. Um, and again, it comes back to this question, right? Once you actually decide, you know, you, you only want to send on this one link, then somehow, you know, if you do the duplication in hardware or firmware or something, then you have to give it information on what links it should actually be transmitted on versus all of them, right? So um, uh, I, I didn't follow transmit it. If you were to do the duplication of multicast transmit in device, firmware or something, right? On station, okay. On No, on station, it's a, multi, it's a unicast frame on, on AP. Oh, so, oh, oh. Oh, oh, you are talking about the case of uh, converting Malagas to unicast? No, I'm talking about actually sending multicast, but okay. on multiple links. Okay. So if you were if you were to have like sequence number assignment in the device, then you would need to do multicast duplication to the links in the device, but then you would need meta information on which links you actually want to transmit it on, because you know all this bridging learning otherwise becomes completely pointless. If you if your device always duplicates to all of the links, right? But I think the way the Qualcomm devices are built is actually different physical hardware. So you don't wouldn't do it in the device. You would do it in in the driver or something. So it's just a question of software. But I'm just saying, like different hardware designs are possible. And, oh, sure, sure. And uh, depends what happens. Anyway, it sounds like deduplication is just an implementation waiting to happen. That no one's had time for. I think someone started looking at it, but um, not really in earnest. What happened with the colors here? OK, I don't know, whatever. We can fix that later. OK, what's the next thing here? Pre-auth, yeah. Yeah, you just. I'm sure there's an easier way of doing that, but whatever. Oh, it doesn't sync up immediately for you. It did. You just deleted it again. No, it's on the next page. <laughs> oh, it's on the next page. <laughs> yeah, okay. It did uh, sync up immediately. Yeah, just, okay. Just looked like it disappeared. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, I'm not sure what we should be discussing of this. So this is the case where, where before MLO. Um, you, you can uh, target access point based on its PSS ID. As an example, you run a scan and you find another access point and you send a frame uh, to that PSS ID. And ours in pre authentication is one example of such use case. And previously, we had no issues because every AP had a net dev for their own PSS ID anyway. So it's going to, regardless of how you uh, bridge together the uh, net devs, uh, it will come there. With MLO and now single net dev. Uh, Was that it, where might... did it actually come to? Because if you have a bridge, all your local PSS IDs are net devs in your local bridge. Right, but the, do you see it on the bridge, or do you have to like have a? Uh, that depends on what user space wants to do. Uh, depending on what type of packet socket you use, you'll get it on either on the bridge or the net dev in the bridge. Oh, okay. It seems to be random without any real <laughs> justification, but in my opinion, but <laughs> it comes on one of those. It, so you basically just have to look at all. I, I look for both of them, I believe. <laughs> it, it changes when you change the packet socket type from draw. I think it went to a different when, when it was not draw or something very strange that I couldn't understand. Uh, whether it's by design or not, I do not know, but I don't really care anymore. <laughs> um, but but uh, what I do care about is in the MLO case, um, since we have only one net of a multiple PSS IDs, we do need to make sure the rest of the system is aware that we have multiple MAC addresses. Right, so I've, I've not played with it, but 
maybe other people here know or have tried. Um, there is API, right? There is like dev add UC address or something like that. Um, Yeah, I think we discussed this offline at some point in time, and I probably even ha had the function name somewhere, but uh, I, don't, I don't have it in front of me now. And I don't think anyone, uh, I'm not aware of anyone having test tested it. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Dev UC add. What is UC? Unicast. Oh, no. Add. Add. Okay. Add, yeah. Um, I feel we just need to call it for each of the link addresses when we have a link. You know, probably only on the AP side. I mean, we don't care on the client side. The link addresses are ephemeral. Effectively, they're not used in advertised. And that was uh, documented as adding. Oh, secondary. I mean, the MLD address secondary. would still be kind of the primary. Yeah, yeah, I'm again adding a secondary. Yeah, you can call it multiple times. Address, and you can call it multiple times, OK. Yeah, you, you, you never know about a secondary is that uh, unicast. Well, it adds one, OK. <laughs> well, yeah, or if it exists, you also have to re remove it again. Right? Yeah, OK, so it doesn't replace it. OK. okay. Oh, and they Well, I, I, yeah, we might need to clean up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, it, it it allocates memory. Yeah, beyond that, I guess there's nothing more more to this other than trying to get someone to actually <laughs> take the effort and uh, experiment with uh, with that and see what happens. Yeah, I, yeah, and see if you can receive the frames and. I don't know, build a hardware some test or something. Yeah, and it. see on which interface. Well, um, that shouldn't change, I would assume. Yeah, that packets shouldn't that will, make it. Yeah, regardless they, of how it get there, packets yeah. that will do the same, I hope. Yeah. Yeah, we... Um... Yeah, I don't think I have a lot of stuff to say about color change. Um, it's just, um, it's, you know, all of these things with, you know, I think you worked on it, didn't you? Who worked on it? Color change? Okay, I don't remember. What did you work on last? <laughs> no, but there was something else. Okay, I don't know. Felt like okay. Um, some okay. So I don't remember. Um, yeah, but there, there are all these things that are like color change and uh, channel switch announcement that are now per link. And. Um, I don't know. Is anyone working on it? Does anyone even need it right now? I've noticed. I mean, I managed to crash HostAPD, our version of HostAPD, <laughs> when when radar detection was rejected and the cleanup paths had bugs. But um, that was just like a weird consequence of it. But yeah, you have to do everything per link, and it's just a bunch of work to. Yeah, but so what currently happens is you get multiple for each link, you get one indication in the same network. For what? I'm just trying to figure out what you mentioned there about how it's currently. 
No, I think practically today it's just not working. Like it, it would try to access some like the default link, which doesn't even exist when you uh, have multi-link or it's, it exists, but it's not used. So when you were to do something like color change, it would probably, maybe it would try to do the color change on all the links. Maybe it would try to do it on none of the links. I, I don't know. I don't think it would work in any way. I'm just more wondering because it's not something that I'm really very familiar with. Um, I'm just more wondering like who would actually be interested in it and um, who's actually using it in the software because I know it's also offloaded in some cases. And I think some of this was written for specifically for MediaTek drivers. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at the history. There's color change. So John Crispin was working on that. And that, yeah, that's, that's in the media the context, I would assume, uh, John based saying. on the, all this thing signed off by No, but some of the stuff also wasn't, wasn't that taken over from him or from yeah, 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 Aruka yeah, yeah. or someone. Yeah, yes, there's multiple others, but that was uh, all this. There's plenty of uh, media that signed off file lines there. So okay. also I'm assuming right. that was the context. Okay. Anyway, I didn't really have a specific question on it. It's just one of those major areas that hasn't seen anyone look at it multi-link. Yeah, um, and did you mention, oh, you did have CSA there? Yeah, I have similar with CSA, which is actually kind of similar code, right? And um, even kind of more complex is radar detection because you have this extra radar detection chain on some hardware and you, I don't know, might do radar detection in different ways. When you have multiple links, that can be supported. And that gets you into that whole thing that I don't think is settled in the spec completely, um, where links are added and removed dynamically. Um, but you know, people are also talking about that, like having an access point that adds a link at some point. Or, uh, Adds or re-enables, depending on your viewpoint and preferences. As in, it might be yeah, disabling, the, re enabling versus adding, removing. But the access point can't really disable a link from a spec point of view when someone's connected to that link, right? So I believe there's work on going. Oh, well, yes, I believe there's work going on in that for a multi-link reconfiguration. Yes, 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 yes. But you know, like I said, it's not really settled as far as I can tell from a spec point of view. Yes. Yeah. It might be more settled than I'm aware of, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's just an area that I feel kind of fuzzy about. I don't know much about it. I don't. I haven't worked on it, and just wanted to see if anyone's actually interested in it. But I don't know. But if no one really has any. Um, well, just one concern I have: random detection is required by law, right? In some some countries, for the access point to be operated at door. Yeah. In theory, in also actually. Obviously. So, yes. Yeah, so if you're not going to support this on multi-link, then what does it mean? That I think that we can use today it means you can't use radar channels. <laughs> But I mean, I'm sure it's going to be supported, right? It's just... Well, we will enforce the rules. So if you don't implement required radar detection, you will not use a link. So that's a clear answer for that question. But, uh... <laughs> uh, but it's kind of annoying not to be able to use most five gigahertz and band spectrum, right? Yeah. So you want radar detection. On six and seven gigahertz, do we have DFS chance or no? No. It has different concerns. We don't have a AFC anywhere on the list. I'm not sure whether AFC, uh, the the frequency control thing for six gigahertz. I remind me. Uh, there's a, a cloud service from which you need to ask permission to use uh, the oh. six gigahertz for standard power yeah, to be able to use those channels. But that reminds me. Yeah, we should add the power stuff. But no radar. No radar, to, yeah, other other complexities. Yeah, do we need, I mean, is there anything to talk about there, though? I mean, who actually runs that service? Um, 
it's confidence I you know I, I cannot <laughs> I cannot discuss that in this, this context. Fair Th- there will be a well anyway I mean we can add a to- topic if you want it's not related to MLO so yeah no no it's more um No, but what I what I was thinking about now was uh, the the power modes uh, like LPI, all that discussion. That's AMC small standard power, but you can be six gig uh, low power. Yeah. Low power and standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just like six gig. I like to discuss six gig. It's the easiest. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Just like do it something like this, maybe. Don't know why the indentation is different now, but yeah, whatever. There's also TPC, right? The most of the things that we care about. TPC? Yeah, power control. Yeah, but TPC is just dynamic, right? It's right. kind of within your limits, you can go lower. I've seen Cisco Access Points advertise a maximum of two dBm, which feels low, but hey. Um, about the internet should just work. I don't think there's not anything new in that area. No. It's perlink anyway. It's perlink. It's all perlink. I mean, there is, and an, an, if we're talking here about multi-link, um, yeah, there is another thing here, which I can add and we can talk about right now, which is the whole MAC ID211 rate scaling. Which again, no one's done any work on for multi-link. Um, so it basically just doesn't really work. But maybe we need to do something there. Do you include uh, unicast link selection in that, or is that always as it to be somewhere in the prime? I haven't thought about that. For for me, that's basically somewhere in the driver slash firmware. Um, oh, that reminds me of another thing, though. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you could do here, like, you could do a uh, link selection, right? Yeah. So add that. And what I call it, I don't know if if I call it that way, like I call it link roaming sometimes, link, you know, activation uh, or link. Do we dynamic link management? Yeah, dynamic, something like that, right? Like that's more of a client side thing, right? Oh, not necessarily. Why, but the AP has to have them all active. Like it can't. No, it does well. Well. But there are reasons why you the dynamically disable something. Okay, so I can put that like we don't need to put client side here. But on the client side, it's more like a roaming thing, right? You have bad connectivity on six gigahertz because you moved out of range. So you, uh, so there, there was anyway. Let's talk about the rate scaling first. Um, rate scaling, right? So, so rate scaling. I mean, again, it's more of a question of. Doing an implementation right now, the way Mac Edit 11 works is basically saying you have to have um, you have to have like offloaded rate scaling for being able to use multi-link right now, because none of the code has been adjusted yet. But it could, you know, presumably be relatively easily adjusted to to um, Treat everything on per link basis, right? To have all the data structures on a per link basis. So you would actually provide a rate selection for each link. You have to, right? I mean, you you don't really know. Whether and, and and for that one, you you still have, are you assuming the link selection happens somewhere underneath, and you still need to calculate the rate for every pot- potentially possible link. So that's that's the kind of part of the question, right? Yeah, because I think those two are so tightly coupled that I'm not sure. Okay, fair enough. Because because you, you I would I would assume you would select the link based on what you expect to get as a, both reliability and throughput. It might not just be that, right? It might also be you'd select the link based on you know, TXOP availability. Or sure, sure. 
or um, and you can reach right on a different link as well so it gets yeah. complex so i guess i mean i guess the question is does anyone even want to do like for mac to 11 hardware sim i just round robin the links just to be able to try all of the links sure. see that the management code is right right i mean that's just um you know, trivial but for for the rates so for the rate scaling i also don't really care so i'm not sure anyone really cares for the rate scaling um i don't know what hardware is out there like you know for multi-link in general for us it's irrelevant it's just offloaded to the firmware anyway yeah i'm assuming what i wrote in in the notes is going to be everything we can cover sorry yeah Okay, fair enough. I mean, uh, yeah. And now we're just the same. Actually, apply to the next one. Yeah, yeah, we can put that there. We we can just. Yeah, I just copy it. So okay, so we'll just see. I mean, we'll just see what happens. I guess. Um. Yeah, link management. So, do we need to split that into like client side and AP side? It feels different, but. Well, I mean, for the client side, it's just not necessarily adding or removing, right? It could just be activating or putting them to sleep. Um, so, so anyway, one of the arguments here was that, so my kind of my thinking on this was always that it's something that probably the driver needs to worry about because you have to take into account, or you might want to take into account things like Bluetooth coexistence and um, LTE coexistence and all kinds of other issues. But at the same time, you can make that exact same argument when you start talking about roaming, right? Because you know, even for roaming, we were talking now about, hey, you know, we should feed information to the supplicant about sort of coexistence and one of the things um that no i'm yeah no one of the things that we were thinking about to, to do in the supplicant api or in the sort of the user space api was that we might have a way of giving information about some kind of other use of the spectrum that we are aware of. So we would say, hey, you know, for for 2.4 gigahertz right now, we expect a 50% degradation because Bluetooth is, you know, because whatever, but you know, internally it might be because Bluetooth is using it and there is a, a video stream, a, a voice stream on the on the Bluetooth, right? That has timing impact. Um, or for five gigahertz right now, we expect some degradation because LTE is using it at the same time. So so that uh, would be there. Or, you know, even for other cases, you might expect some degradation because, I don't know, something else is happening in the system and that channel just happens to be impacted by noise on your platform. And so you have a degradation. So you might prefer to use a different channel, right? I mean, we had some hardware designs where some traces were routed too close to the antennas. And, you know, whenever you did something with, something else on the platform, USB or audio or whatever, you could impact certain five gigahertz frequencies in fairly significant ways. So one of the things we were talking about was, okay, you know, maybe we need to have some kind of API or some kind of information provided about these coexistence constraints or, you know, you wrote here competing needs, something like that, right? To the supplicant to impact roaming decisions. But then, you know, I got into this whole, okay, multi-link, you, you know, re-enable the link, disable the link because of uh, these constraints. But then people rightfully said, hey, you know, why are you saying, you know, this link thing, which is very close to roaming, should be part of the driver, whereas the roaming, which is, you know, uses the same information, basically should be part of the supplicant, it is part of the supplicant, right? They're kind of two sides of the same coin in a way 
because now with the link switching, you can actually say, I'm going to connect to all the four links on this access point and just select the one as I'm moving around that gives me the best performance right now. So it's a sort of a subset of roaming. You're not having to reconnect, but you just pick the links. Um, so, you know, I guess the question here is, do we want to unify that somehow? Do we think we need to unify that somehow? Should it remain the way it is now, be where basically MacAdich 11 says, here is, you know, the link that you associated on, that's the only link that's enabled and the driver has some API, user space only gets like a debug API to, to see which links are active. Then we need to do more. Like we, I, I always thought that for the client side, we don't really have to worry too much about advertising the capabilities, whether it's, um, you know, how many links you can have active at the same time, what bands they're on, whether you have enhanced single radio support, MLSR, whether you have, you know, all these different things. Um, so that adds a bunch of complexity if you have to push it to the supplicant to make decisions about which links should be active or not, right? At this, on the other hand, you know, we have that complexity in a way with the roaming and with all that things anyway. So, so open discussion. Um, what's the, you know what's what's the preference for for things here? What I don't have an answer. Yeah, and for full context, we do have a non Mac element drivers that do roaming decision in in driver firmware anyway. So. Sure. User space interfaces needs to live with yeah both happening. So really, that question about what should do what um, applies mainly, if if not only to Mac to them. Yeah, but well, I mean, if you have roaming decisions done in firmware, then you would presumably do link management in firmware. Yeah. Itself, yes. Right. Yes, I mean, yeah. there's no way I can see that you would do link management in somewhere else in software and roaming decisions in firmware. I'm not sure that makes a lot of sense. Um, but you know. Today, we make roaming decisions for MacAdoo 211, at least. We make roaming decisions in the supplicant. And I'm not sure we want to change that because basically we'd have to just take that code and stick it into the kernel, right? It doesn't really gain much, like doesn't really do much. But then, you know, if, if I was arguing before that link enabling decisions should be based in the driver, because it has all this information and because it knows all intimately knows what are the hardware capabilities and the, you know, EMLSR capabilities or whatnot. Um, why does that make sense? Right. The question, you know, rightfully the question comes up, why does that make sense? How is it so very different from roaming decisions that we should do one in user space and one kind of on the other side of the spectrum in the driver or even in the firmware? Um, I think in our case, it would be the driver, but so, so I don't know. I, I, I don't have an answer on this. It was easy, of course, to say, like, I only care about it from a driver's point of view and I can make these decisions, but you know, as we get, as we move along now, as we have more complex decision-making processes there, as we need to consider more information right now. The only use case for link switching was basically testing. So, you know, you would say, okay, I'm just going to write to this debugfs file, the bitmap of links that are active and you can only have one active right now anyway, statically known for your hardware. But, you know, of course, as we add more features and as we add more other things that increasingly is no longer true. Um, you have single or en enhanced multi-link single radio, you have, uh, potentially hardware with multiple links, but maybe two and not four and things like that. Um, so kind of the trade-off is, yeah, maybe it feeds back into roaming and maybe roaming actually needs to know and take this into account at least, right? But then, you know, maybe it makes sense to do it in the same place because you, you want, even for roaming, you want to have the, the information. Like if, if the supplicant were to decide to roam to this other access point because it's on six, seven gigahertz and gives you much better throughput, but then the driver decides to only activate the 2.4 gigahertz link that you know might completely counteract that roaming decision, right? Um, so, so that feels a little, you know, having it separated feels a little, also feels a little strange.
I mean, e even in general, I mean, not just uh, where it's done, but uh, there's currently no concept of multiple links and how you combine the estimates on how good a link is and for your full benefit of the full association, all that's missing today. So, sure. So, we, so we yeah, for the roaming decision. Even that. Yeah, so, for, for even for the roaming decision yeah, in the first place, yeah, you don't have multi link. Yes, yes, so car yes, currently we don't really have. Yeah. At least in upstream, we don't today have any real concept of, hey, let's uh, figure out what, what, which APML provides the best set of links for my needs. Yeah, yeah. And it may indeed not be even true, but it might be reliability. You never know. Sure. I mean, multiple links are there for multiple reasons. One of which really, probably the major one which, of which is really the reliability rather than uh, throughput. Uh, yeah, aggregated throughput yeah. is just one aspect of it, yeah. yes. And in fact, you know, that needs information on what your hardware is capable of doing, right? Sure. Aggregated throughput is only as good as your, you know, hardware. If your hardware is a single stream, um, you don't really get more aggregated throughput, right? You just get more flexibility in choosing and more reliability. Um, I, yeah, I think for me, the most important thing here right now is, you know, if we were to put this into user space, which effectively means the supplicant, um, that means we need to design a whole bunch of APIs, right? We need to know what is the hardware capable of, what what modes can it do, uh, how many links can it do, and which channels, and it's, it's similar to what, um, what sort of the multi-interface advertising was, but different. And uh, so that, yeah, I, I guess that means, and we would actually need the API to switch the links, right? We don't really have any any formal API today to. When you say switch the links, do you mean activate? Act, yeah, act, I mean activate, enable, yeah. disable a link. No, I mean adding, removing we can do, right? But not on the client. You don't have. Yeah, sorry, I mean, do you mean um, to have an impact for association or to have an impact for use during an association? No, I mean during the association. Okay, so for just association, the, you can decide. Just which completely means, disabling yeah. dynamically a link from being used during an association. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then potentially re enabling that. Yeah. Or, or, or like switching the bitmap of active links or something like that. Yeah. But even that becomes harder, right? Because then, you know, what does it mean for a link to be active if you're talking about EMLSR? Um, that's also a little. Well, I mean, you can you can decide not to use one of your links at all. So that's basically what what you you, you have mean. A, you have associated with that link as part of your MLO, but uh, it's yes. just not ever used. Yeah, we could, well, you, yeah, yeah, basically you put it to power safe, right? Yeah, well, whatever it means, but the, no frames are being received or transmitted on that link. Yeah, yeah. But it is still part of the full thing. And actually, you do keep uh, in sync of things like the group keys for that link. Yes, right. Which reminds me of another thing, but okay. Um, I mean, that's kind of like the power save today. We don't really have user space. Well, I was going to say controlling it, but well, we do. Yeah, I'm not sure how what to say about just with, with, with a pre Wi-Fi seven. What to, what to say about uh, enabling disabling power save dynamically? We don't really. I, I think we do have a we do have an attribute that you can enable or disable power saving, but that's yeah, it. you can. But so it's, it's up to driver to really decide when to go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. So in that sense, I think for for me, the part of deciding to Disable, re-enable a link is pretty much in the same category. You could say that. I mean, yeah, um, that's that's makes sense in a sense. But I'm, you know, I'm just thinking also about the the feedback to roaming decisions. Like, if you want to make a good roaming decision, um, but you don't even know if the hardware will have will be have the ability to have two links active at the same time you know you can't even calculate throughput right because you don't know what will happen um well i mean that, that comes to your use case again because I, I i'm not really sure right, what you judge that on right i mean if if you want to today you would judge on sort of I'm, maximum throughput in a sense yeah i'd probably take max of those two links 
So you honest. move the max of all the links, yeah. but then if for some reason the driver right now is like deciding to only ever activate the two point four yeah, gigahertz, yeah, drawing. you you don't win anything, right? So, yes. So um, it it is a feedback loop in a sense, right? If yeah, for, for that simple case of two point four versus five, I don't think it makes much of a difference because regardless of which APML do you select, uh, they likely have. Yeah, 2.4. Yeah. Um, but there can certainly be more complex cases where it would make a difference. Like you, you have a subset of the band available, and uh, you could enable that with one APML, but not the other one. That might have a sync, 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 event impact. Or yes. even things like 6 gigahertz, you might have uh, that in range for one. Well, oh, that would actually work in the max thing. If you have six gigs through one API and not the other one, I, that probably would show up as the maximum value being much less yeah. for the one where six yeah, gig yeah, is not yeah. really the thing last time. Right, sufficient. then the six gigahertz would be preferred. I mean, I'm not sure you see a lot of cases where you don't even have a 2.4 link on some access point, but I guess it will also happen. Um, yeah, yeah. You could only, you could also have like, Three six gigahertz link. It's technically not. If they're, if they're on different channels, yeah. It's not not allowed, but <laughs> might not make a lot of sense. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, right. So that's that's the thing, right? If you think about it, as uh, oh, there was a question on the chat here. Sorry. MLO with different controller. How about MLO with different controllers, or is it possible only per controller? What is a controller in that context? If you want to talk, I can add you also. Ah, so you mean of? Uh, I mean, a piece of hardware, basically, or, or I mean, Mac is a standard term. If, if yeah, the Mac standard. is a standard term. From a Mac, for for from the standard point of view, you need different Macs on the different links, um, because that's how it works. But um, I think maybe you mean a piece of hardware, like a NIC, a physical piece of hardware. In, and in that case, um, well, so, so as an example, access point, many do have uh, two independent one where each uh, band they have a different radio that comes potentially on a different PCIe card. So if that's what you're talking about, things that are collocated in a single physical box, yes, you can have that. If you were to ask me, can you have two independent separate boxes that are connected by, let's say, Ethernet? Uh, you could make it look like that, but uh, my security side would be complaining about your sharing some state between those two independent <laughs> boxes. So it may be more of a theoretical question if well, you hide the fact. Block access and state. Well, that, yeah, yeah, that. yes. There's a lot of state. There's a lot of state that would need to be exchanged. So they better be pretty well connected to each other. But but yes, certainly multiple P like PCIe cards. If that's the question, yes, absolutely. I would assume that would be relatively common for IP designers. Yeah, but from a software point of view, we're kind of making it look like it's a single device in, in a sense, right? I mean, from a... In the standard upstream design, yes. Yeah. Some vendors might do misuse yeah. that design, but... Uh, yeah. So technically, it's possible to do lots of things, but uh, but there's lots of low-level control that's going to be needed between the links. So whatever you do, that, that should be taken into account. And, and the, yes, the latest requirements for that are pretty strict. Maybe we should do a little MLO introduction. We should have done a little MLO introduction if that question comes up. Um, no, but you have a lot of state that's shared. So as you can see in the code also today, um, and that was you know the major work we did for MLO so far, was to look at each individual piece of the state. And it's not complete yet, I would say. Look at each individual piece of the state and decide whether it belongs to the MLD, the and that may be the local MLD or the remote MLD, right? Or it belongs to an individual link, and that again locally or remotely, right? So, for instance, for for if you're thinking about security, then 
the the pairwise key to exchange frames is at the MLD level, but the group key is at the link level because of considerations with you know devices only connecting to one link and things like that. So um, so all this data is split, right? So you know, security-wise, I guess it would be easier to to share. But then, when you transmit, for instance, you transmit a frame encrypted with the PTK with the pairwise key, then of course that frame, that key has a single sequence counter for the transmit, right? So if you want to implement it in different pieces of hardware, you'd actually have to share that state every time you transmit a frame. You have to feed back to the other ones that I now use that sequence counter. And if you get it wrong, you transmit two frames with the same sequence counter, and you break all of your security. So that's the same PN, right? Not the sequence number, the, the PN. Or um, the more real-time issue would be your block hack state is at the MLD level. So, uh, so when when you have a block hack session, it's active between two MLDs, uh, the non-AP MLD and the AP MLD, and then you can you know you can do all kinds of things right you can send a couple of frames here in the block accession and here and get block hack for all of them and things like that so so you'd have to like actually have real kind of real time sharing between the different pieces the different links um for that for that to work well i don't actually know how you would do it when you have multiple pieces of hardware i mean we actually literally have a physical single scoreboard in hardware with like semi hardware semaphores to get access to get information from the different links into it but um yeah i guess there are ways you could make that work even if you don't immediately send maybe you could just not send the block arc right away well then you should be sending immediate block arc but i don't know anyway there's probably ways to make it work but you have so you have some state at, at the different levels, right? A lot of state is at the link level, but if a lot of state is also at the MLD level. The most like the most fundamental state that could be at the MLD level is whether you're authenticated or associated or authorized already and things like that. Um, yeah, so I again coming back to the link management. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what to do. I mean, like, should we feed back information to the supplicant about what decisions we might make? I mean, clearly we could feed back information about the, the roaming decisions that were, sorry, the link decisions that we did make, but that's only like an instantaneous snapshot. It doesn't tell the supplicant anything about what would happen when, you know, we'll roam to another channel, right? I mean, maybe we didn't select the six gigahertz link because there's a six gigahertz on that specific channel there's a six gigahertz uh something else on the device that's interfering right some kind of interfering interference on on the board and then if you select a different six gigahertz channel you will get much better throughput that link would actually be used where or you know maybe we just didn't use the six gigahertz link because it felt like it was out of range or some other reason so i I just don't know. I mean, I I don't even know what decision making would go into the link activation. Like you kind of have a feeling what should go into it, but exactly how it works, it's not not sure that we've completely defined it yet. Um, it sounds like it can be kind of custom, you know, because depending on the preference of the user at the moment. Because you said one can choose the link because we need higher reliability at this time. And then you will go for a specific link, otherwise you might like choose higher throughput and then we go for another link, right? Yeah, I mean it oh, sorry, now I would be. <laughs> um so Antonio was saying it could be sort of a, a user preference also, um what's reliability versus throughput. Versus throughput, right? Or you know, sometimes latency if you yeah. have the ability to transmit on multiple links. Um yeah, but how you know how would you even do that, right? Even like a user preference, what would the user say, right? Like how how would you expose that? I don't think you know the distros would like to have a checkbox there. You know, <laughs> I want lower latency versus I want more throughput or something, right? Um, 
I, I I'm not sure I see how you would be able to to uh, sort of dynamically adjust that. Yeah, I mean, we may also have concurrent applications, one that wants reliability, one that wants throughput, and they are <laughs> insisting on the same card. And what do we pick? We don't know. Yeah. It, yeah, it's not really bonding because, like I said, it needs more of a decision of which link is active at a time, right? You don't necessarily have the ability to sustain all of them concurrently. So with bonding, you're kind of assuming that they're all there, right? But here, you you all you made a connection on all of them, but you know maybe you can only do one physically because you only have one radio, so you have to pick some one of them, right? So there are different reasons to pick different ones, right? But so my so like I said, my my feeling is that there are a lot of ways to to do this, a lot of you know possible options to implement it, which would kind of argue in favor of doing it in user space because then you know yeah. complexity wise, um, that that's a benefit. Um, but if you don't, then you could still do it in the driver or you know in the driver based on sort of firmware giving you information but you could also pass that information to the supplicant making a decision i'm i, I think my my biggest worry with this is that we end up in a situation where we have two disjoint pieces making two disjoint decisions and they interfere in in bad ways like the supplicant making a roaming decision mm -hmm. that you know, selects a certain number of links, but the driver saying, oh, you know, this link that I was just asked to use, or it wasn't really asked to use, but this link is like really bad for some reason. And then, you know, that roaming decision was based on the assumption that that link would get used because it gives you a higher throughput or something, right? Um, so, you know, the, the supplicant saying, hey, you know, there's an access point with a six gigahertz link. The, the six gigahertz link is much nicer than the five gigahertz link I'm on right now. So I'll pick that access point that has the six gigahertz link, but then the driver saying, oh, you know, six gigahertz is really crappy right now for some other reason, coexistence or whatever it be. And then say you have a choice between an access point that has 2.4 and five and an access point that has 2.4 and six. If the supplicant sees the six as sort of better and the driver says, oh, I, I can't use six. So I have to you know, stick to the four to, to the 2.4 then you know the access point that has 2.4 and 5 might actually be the better choice right um so that's that's kind of what i'm worried about if you have this disjoint set of two pieces making decisions about something that's sort of intimately related but let's assume that the supplicant has a way to pick the best entity among all the ones that are available how about we simply extend the scan api so that the supplicant is provided with a bit more information and then it can pick instead of among APs, it would pick among links. So like it already gets the links. Well, already gets the links. One thing we don't though, though is we don't provide driver specific information about the specific uh, Yeah, that's true. We could right. Add. We could add that. We signals, for instance, we don't say, hey, by the way, currently I cannot use that link or I would really prefer you don't that we would add in the scan results as a result. Yeah. So we already get the RSSI yes. per link, let's say. Something simple. So we, yes, we do that, but we don't get the, the, the non Wi Fi coexistence on constraints. All right. Oh, which is, yeah, which is actually similar to, I don't know if you need to add it to the scan, right? I mean, it's it's similar to what we were looking at to have like a, a report from the driver saying, you know, this frequency is kind of bad right now, or yeah, that's, that's this option. range of frequency or this, you know, this frequency range is kind of bad right now because of Bluetooth coexistence or because of LTE coexistence or because of platform constraints or, or something else, yeah, right? That exists in vendor events at least. Okay, we don't, yeah, I guess but we that, could just lift that to upstream. Yeah, so, so, the, so the use case is for one use case for P2P, for Selection for proponent. So you want to know the driver tells you, hey, I really don't want you to use this area, so negotiate something else. That's an existing use case. Okay. Use for colleagues, for Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if the uh, producer 
user space, you can select something that you can say is like a profile. They prefer more latency, the latency that would be more intermediate. It's not even a netlink message necessarily. I mean, that that might, depending on where we do link selection, it might even just be telling the supplicant, right? No, it might be reverse. You have one app wanting one and another one. one but yeah, else. exactly. Like, how do you decide? Like, who gets to make a decision on this? Do you do you think the user would want to select it for a network for like, you know, some way in the Wi-Fi settings? I'm not sure that's very. Uh, like, what, then what would the default be? Like, I mean, I. <laughs> I mean, in theory, it should be done automatically. In practice, I've not heard of anyone doing it in a real device automatically. What automatic? Um, let's select the based on the real needs of applications that are currently operating. ICPS, right? <laughs> um, I don't think anyone is doing that. It might, might be a system. No, we are doing it on Windows. You can do it on Windows with our like special software. But with all apps, third party apps. With a lot of detection on third party apps and yeah, things. Yeah. May or may not work nicely, but yeah. um, best effort. Yeah. I don't know if there's a there should be a product page on it somewhere, but I, there are similar things on Android, but that, I don't know how well they really work in But anyway, no, I would not give that to user that sounds like yeah. a very minor use case. Yeah. Um So yeah, we also have lunch. Fifteen quarter past. Fifteen. Yeah. Okay, so we have a few more minutes. Okay, I thought it was similar to yesterday. It's similar, but not really. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I mean, we could think about just adding, lifting that from the vendor stuff that you just, were just talking about, right? And and add the API. We were looking into that anyway. Um, add like an API per frequency range or something, whether it's, I don't know, you could have like a, maybe a throughput impact percentage or something and just set it to like, you know, 0% if you really, really, really can't use that frequency and set it to 80% if it's just a little bit impacted or something. Um, and of course, leave out the frequency range if it's like perfect, if it's 100%, but if there's no impact basically, but um, that would. We already have some of this information in the FI info, right? The FI info reports all the frequencies that are supported and we report some flags for those. And we could add something like, this is this is a penalty of 50% of the yeah, throughput. Yeah, or... not necessarily. Well. And we do this for the list of supported uh, channels. There. Yeah, you could add it per channel or something. Yeah, we. I mean, Yoni was saying we expose a list of channels, so we could uh, add it there. I'm not sure it makes. Yeah, I mean, it really depends sense. a bit on what's the. That, that's something you need to pull from a user space. So that's another one. This, if this is dynamic thing, it's maybe more of an yeah. event. I, I do could, uh, did take a quick look at the vendor specific, specific things that are actually both. There's a get preferred channel list. And then there's a dynamic event. So both designs are being used. So. You could also just have an event that says, please check. Like, no, of course. Like, you don't need to carry all the information. Yeah, but like we do event. for regulatory information, yeah. change the event. Yeah, yeah. sure. But is that something that we feel is good enough? I mean, is that like. I think it would be helpful to add that information regardless whether that ends up being used in the end. Uh, I do not know. But I well, mean, I'm sure that if we implemented that, we would also come up with the you know, supplicant. Yeah, that, that's probably. Yeah, that prob yeah, that probably. Yeah, that probably would. But I mean, I, I kind of like from the power user viewpoint having that information available in user space. But uh, sure, which would argue for not making it an event, but being able to query it, not purely. Oh, it I see. Event. I see. <laughs> but yes. storing it somewhere in the kernel. Yes, it is quite, able there to... might be need for use case for different use based applications being able yeah. to fetch that rather than having to monitor yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Or even, you know, subsequent crashing and not having to wait for the next event, right? If it restarts or well, I mean we can certainly make something subsequent to force the driver to do that. But but, but yeah, I mean it sounds in that sense the uh, channel list would probably be good location because yeah. subsequent is going to fetch that anyway whenever starting. So yeah, 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 yeah. if it's there and you get an uh, event saying hey it was updated. 
it is the most complex thing to pass from the kernel set than some <laughs> CPU, but other than that, I don't, it's not going to, well, I'm assuming it's not going to be changing multiple times per second, which would no. <laughs> start getting a bit excessive. Hopefully not. Yeah, you so you won't update it for every Bluetooth packet. <laughs> Dump, survey dump yeah but it's that's stuff yeah it's similar yeah it's similar but that has different information it's more like things that you saw on the channel um versus no i mean what's this this is coexistence you either saw or know it currently yeah, exists on the yeah, channel but, fair enough it's but similar. survey stuff is not full list of channels it's a list of channels on which you have something if i remember correctly oh yeah i don't know what's the difference but then if you don't have anything there that you know about then that's not, not report that channel right yeah but i think survey dump is also not not necessarily um keeping the state all the time i think yeah i'm a bit worried about that side Cannot identify why, but it feels risky. Error than yeah. journalist, oh, supported journalist. So okay, let me let me write down here. So this would be consider what happened now. <laughs> yeah, just off by one on my keyboard here. Uh, Find Google and add to the channel. Yeah, obviously. So, okay, so, but that's something that we want, I guess we want anyway, according to one way or the other. I mean, we, this came up in our discussions internally before we even thought about multi that, that um, well, yeah, that, So that's come up, you know, many times, yeah. Um, so I guess the question is now, in the last couple of minutes before we go to lunch, does that fix our link management issue too? Like if we say, you know, this impacts the roaming, in a way that we could say, you know, if you have this particular frequency selected, we'd probably, it would be impacted a lot. So the roaming algorithm would not pick, you know, that again, that hypothetical example where you have one access point doing 2.4 and 5 and another access point doing 2.4 and 6. If we have a, a major impact registered on the 6 gigahertz channel, then the roaming wouldn't pick that access point. It would kind of solve that problem, right? Whereas if anyway, the subject decided to select 2.4 and 6 access point, the driver might activate only the 2.4 one link because, yeah. So, so I, I think it could solve the part of the issue, which is where you have conflicting information between, between those two operations. I'm not yet convinced that uh, this address is the question of which end it is taking care of the dynamic link, enabling, disabling, that could still be the driver during an association. Well, so but, but but that in that sense it's so this that so that, the way I, maybe i've heard it differently uh that would solve the issue of roaming selection being able to do it in a way that will not conflict yeah but what happens during an association i'm not yet convinced that i, I think that actually both might be needed we might have use uses where user space decides that by the way for the next who knows what time i want to use this link for something else or this radio related to this link for something else so let me disable it myself here force the drive to do so and then there will be other cases where the driver decides hey i want to do something else and disable that so i could see both happening so in that sense but from a user space point of view what would what could actually happen i mean it would have to be on a different radio or something right if it's on the same hardware and it needs the link for a remain on channel or something else then that would be sort of an internal thing in the driver to manage anyway, right? Let's say you share the radio between BTN and 2.4 on, on Wi-Fi. Why would and user you... space do that? I mean... Well, you can either do it beforehand or react as a reaction to 
beat the using data. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Fine. And again, that would be, like, in my view, that would be where the driver says, oh, Bluetooth just became active. So now my sort of impact on 2.4 gigahertz went up because, and I register that impact, I update things, right? And that will in turn affect the roaming decisions maybe, or, you know, my link selection. Um, but yeah. Yeah, then power saving is one as well, where you dynamically want to disable something when you sure. know you are not going to be using it. Sure. for a long period of time so i do not know where the driver always knows in many cases i would assume it knows when the host goes to sleep so yes <laughs> but uh, if it's something that that much but... all right so i i, I... but then anyway i mean I, that part the dynamic changes i i don't think that really needs to be in any way tied to what we do with uh, the initial roaming decision for which this information is useful. So, right, it's it, useful for that yeah. for sure. So to avoid the conflict. So, if, even if someone wants to do it differently for the enabling disabling part in the future, I don't think it in any way means this is not useful information. No, no, no. That, yeah. that I agree with. And if that, we can, yeah. And it's if just, we... my, I guess the, the next question is just, you know, do we actually want to push link activation, deactivation decisions into user space? Um, you know, based on that information or, or some of this information versus, you know, saying, yeah, we made the connection on multiple links. You just, you know, get to use whichever one you like. It doesn't matter. I don't want to take it away from the driver. Okay. However, <laughs> I, I have no issues having extra enforcement from user space. I could think of both cases being used, but I mean, it's something we can easily add when some, someone gets a right. I justifiable mean, if we, if we... enough use case. Yeah, if we basically decide that, yeah, we, we don't really feel like the driver should not be in control. Or if we think the driver should at least be able to be in control, then we just, you know, continue with what we have, right? And add whatever we need later. I believe the driver should be allowed to do that. But it is a link on need without user space being able to prevent it. Okay, fair enough. Um, I mean, if, if user space wants to prevent something, just disconnect. But uh, well, yeah, I mean, if user space but, but, or just not but, connect on that link, right? I mean, yeah, today at yeah, least the yes, subject. Yeah. And there's a, a similar, uh, you know, related question here. Today, the subject has to decide which link is actually the first one that's active um, oh. in the design that we we implemented so far. Oh, oh, I see. So you get the list of links, but you don't have a choice of which link you are actually sending the authentication frame on because the authentication frame is only on a single link. So, um, although, you know, you could send the authentication frame on one link and the association on the other. No, I that's against the that's spec. That's um, so, so yeah, so, so basically the supplicant does make a decision on which link is used for the association, um, because of that decision where to authenticate and, and then that propagates to where to associate or it, says where to associate actually it has to say that <laughs> so so the initial link but again the initial link you you know that's just a equal handshake afterwards you can do whatever you like so um it's not really a major constraint and even there you could consider this information right if this says like six gigahertz is highly impacted by something else by some you know competing coexistence constraints or something then you might not want to use six gigahertz for the authentication handshake. Or just always use 2.4 or whatever. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, if you want to only connect on, on oh, um, six, you would have to. <laughs> Although I expect that with Wi Fi 7 to actually become pretty rare. Um, to have an access point that only has six, six and seven gigahertz. Because even today, right, they're co-located and you have the scanning to find them through the other one and everything. So, um, yeah. All right. So, so I will look at that um, here. We were looking at this anyway, the sort of this impact API or the coexistence constraints API. Um, yeah, I'm not sure yet. It's a really good place to keep it in the channel list. It might be a lot of, well, then again, it might just be a single small value for each channel. Um, yeah, I, I have to look at it. One more 
Do you want to use the mic? I was saying just one more comment about where the decision should be made. I think that, if I'm not wrong, that when this applicant makes the decision to roam somewhere else, he's making the decision based on the link characteristics, right? So if we separate the logic and we keep the link activation in the driver or whatever it is, and the roaming decision in the in this applicant, this applicant may say, okay, let's move to another access point because I found a better link. But like you said, then the driver may say, no, we don't want to use this link. We'll use something else. Then the roaming decision will be totally bogus. Right, that's what I was saying, right? Yeah, so um, it feels like separating this is really not working well, no? Somehow. Yeah, but I, yes, I, I mean, I agree. That was what I was initially thinking about, right? But if we say, okay, you know, we give you a way of knowing what I'm likely going to do on that link, right? If we say like, have this API that says the driver can say, I'm not going to use six or, you know, please don't use six, seven gigahertz yeah. because it's not a good thing right now because, you know, I don't know, maybe something else is happening. Someone plugged in a weird USB device that has a lot of noise. Um, I don't know. USB typically tends to be five gigahertz, but whatever. Okay. Um, then then um, that would be considered as part of the roaming decision, right. right? And then the subject wouldn't really make a roaming decision that completely counteracts what we would do with the link decision, yeah. right? And yeah. So as long as they're not completely orthogonal to each other, but have sort of similar information available to them, it feels like it should work um, without really forcing it all to be in a single place. You know, yeah. Why keeping two entities deciding on the same thing and hoping they will do the same, will make the same decision when we can move everything in one entity and just have the logic there? Well, I mean, there is a lot of complexity to moving it, right? Because okay. it's not just which link is active. You also have like maybe um, with the with the enhanced multi multi link. What's it actually called? EMLSR, enhanced multi link single radio. <laughs> okay. Um, so you have like a frame that. Uh, no, I'm gonna not. I'm not going to talk about how it works because the details are vague in my head. But um, so you do have a lot of complexity. It's not a simple use that one link or use that other link, right? You could also have two, or you could have multiple active, or um, you might be able to use five, two point four and five, or two point four and six, but not five and six at the mm -hmm. same time um, in terms of the bands. Right, um, so there is quite a bit of complexity there that is much more complicated than a roaming decision because of hardware constraints and and limitations okay. and things like that. Right, so to actually make that push that into the same place would require a significant amount of investment in kind of capability advertising and okay. some of it we need to do anyway for access point, right? But some doesn't need some some of it um doesn't really need to be on the access point side okay so, and then so. like you were saying then it might be better to just expose like i'm the driver and i'm not going to use this channel at all this link at all so just applicant knows and then yeah. you can just avoid that which that is basically link. what we can do here right if we set the impact on that channel to be really high saying like i'm you know basically never going to use this because yeah. there's some major interference here even if i don't want to use it for some other reason right i could just say that Right, yeah, and, and then, then this applicant would just skip the channel at all, yeah. that, that link at all. Yeah. yeah. Well, it would probably like have, I don't know, I don't know how we design it. What one thing we were thinking of is just you know look at it as a percentage in in throughput impact or something, and then you know if the applicant makes a decision based on expected throughput right now, if you multiply that by like one percent, then you know everything else is going to win, right, um, over it. But I don't know. I, I don't know. I'd have to look at how it works today. What the APIs are there today it might make sense to model it on that, just so we don't have to have two completely different implementations there. Um, I'm I'm not familiar with it very much right now. Sure. Can you use the mic? And lunch. Oh, yeah. I have a question, but perhaps I'm I'm misunderstanding something. Uh, does the roaming on affects only to the same band and dynamic link the the ML O is affecting to all the rest of the band? So the decision is different. No, the roaming is 
Yeah, no, roaming. no, no. The roaming is to an AP MLD, so it's always to whatever bands or links that new access point has. Okay, right? so it's not okay. Okay, well, all your old links will go away. All the new, old things, yeah. Set of new links. Yeah. Okay, so if you have one not, access point that has like I, two was, I was thinking perhaps the roaming, at least what I understand, is only affecting to one band. No, I don't. No, it's, it's, no, it's all, all of the links all together. Ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's not thank you. Is in in that sense, it's also unlike bonding, right? Because there mm -hmm. you could like disconnect one and add another, but here you have to like like I was saying earlier, the the actual connection state is at the MLD level, so it's for all of the links together. So when you disconnect and roam, you lose all of the, the all of the connectivity. Yeah. Okay, so I think we need to go to lunch. Thanks, everyone. Um, when do we come back? Anyone have the An agenda? Hour and, half. hour and a half. So quarter to One. two. One forty-five. Okay. One forty-five local time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Actually, that's yeah. same as UTC right now. Yeah, no, it's, no. We are not getting the time. Uh, one hour or by three. Yeah. UTC is one hour behind us because we're still in summertime, right? Yeah. Yeah. Until the end of the month. So four, three, four, five. Four. Okay. Back. An hour and a half. Oh, you already added here, <laughs> Mesh. Uh, yeah, Antonio, did you want to talk about Mesh? Do we have a mic again? Okay, well, I, I didn't really want to talk about Mesh. It's more like, first, in the standard, is there anything new for Mesh mode? Like, is Wi-Fi 7 defining anything new? This is more a question for Johannes. And uh, if there is anything... Probably Yoni can better answer that, but um, yeah. I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure Mesh got defined to get EHT officially. It's okay, don't worry. Okay. You're good. So probably we're not going to have any real change for Mesh itself. It's more about this multi-link thing, probably, that we want to make sure it can work with Mesh. Or I don't think so. No, we just ignore Anyone multi want multi-link for Mesh? I don't, I mean. That would be fun. <laughs> I, it would be highly complex Yeah. because you don't even do association. So how do you negotiate multiple links when you create a Mesh connection? like? You have you'd have to extend the spec in a way, I think. Yeah, so maybe this is what is missing that I was hoping was defined somewhere. So there is okay, there is no spec for negotiating a link, a multiple link thing in mesh mode. What do you do in mesh mode? I mean, you just I don't even remember now, honestly. Um, uh, I don't yeah, remember. I don't remember how you how you even create the link in a sense, or the connection in mesh. Uh, well, my memory is still stuck in IBSS mode where you simply detect other nodes. Well, yeah. So <laughs> and, and, and you create the association. Even idea. there, you do authentication to be able to exchange, um, to do the crypto, right? To do the four-way handshake. Right, you still do, yeah. There was some RS, IBSS RSM implementation where you will still exchange. But in mesh, I don't know. Anyway, as far as I'm aware, no one is thinking about mesh and multi-link and i didn't think i saw anything in the spec that would define any sort of you know mesh action frame to contain multi-link elements or anything like that mm -hmm. uh, so it's only defined i was trying to find the text saying uh, it shall not be used and i'm assuming that somewhere there so <laughs> mlo is between an ap mld and non-ap mld and mesh is neither of those so as far as the standard is concerned, it's not defined. And as far as I'm aware, there's no plan on anyone's part to define it. Okay. 
yeah, I think all the references to the mesh and the spec are sort of existing um, content. And yeah, indeed, multilink is between AP and non AP, and you know, clearly non AP in this case is, yeah, I, yeah, it's just not defined. I'm not sure it makes that much sense. Well, yeah, I don't know. I guess you could well, argue that it makes just it, as much sense, right? It makes I a mean, lot of sense in a mesh um, because when you have a link between mesh points, now you can choose the best link based on what your mesh application is. So like you were saying before, if you want to have reliability, then the mesh would then Right, but for which... a mesh, like for a, a mesh, you would, all of them would basically have to be acting like an access point, right? Because they would all have to keep like all of their links active because, you know, the way you do multi-link and you do power, you'd have to define a million things. How do you do power save of those links? And how do you do, um, in an, in an AP, non-AP or AP client case, it's very easy, right? The AP has got to have those links. If it wants to do something special with them, disable them or something, it has to do a, a protocol, right, to tell everyone. Whereas the client can dynamically just, you know, pick any link, put the other one to sleep and gets all these updates and everything. So you'd have to define all of that for Mesh. I'm not aware of anyone working on that or even wanting to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. So I presume mesh will simply be left alone. And at some point, if somebody wants to improve something and take some of this concept and move them to mesh, then we will see what happens. Yeah. But it would be spec amendment, right? Well, or, sometimes, you know, or implementation defined, basically. Like. Sometimes it just happened like that. Yes. That's, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it would work, though, in this case, right? Because you would have to define the use of the multi link element. In, in certain frames and the use of how, you know, how does that asymmetry that you have between the AP and the client, how does that translate into mesh, right? You, you Now, if you want to activate, deactivate links, do, you know, does everyone need to go through the still yet to be defined handshake, like thing, how the access point would do it, or does it work like the client would do it, or, you know, it's not, it's just not defined. I don't think you can do it without changing the spec. You could certainly say, you know, there's a trivial extension of mesh to use EHT. And, and oh, that, that is in the draft. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And there was a comment about including MBSs for one of the EHT status. Hmm, OK. Um, but someone thought it was needed. Yeah, I mean, I, that, that's a very trivial thing to do also, right? I mean, you just add the right thing to the right frame and you negotiate EHT and that's it. It's just another fire rate thing, right? So um, that's easy. But the multi-link, that's very complicated. Yeah, I mean, in Mesh, we already have some kind of multi-link with multi-radius access points already, you know, that you have three different files and then you just put them together in a Mesh configuration and then the routing protocol will decide which one to use. Basically. Right. But so, multi-link in term in the way MLO is defined, right, is very different because yeah. of the keys and the shared aggregation session uh, block agreements and, you know, all the shared state within it that exists within an MLD now and not for each link, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what I'm saying is that what we already have as multi-link in mesh might be already enough, actually. So probably, I mean, I don't see anybody working on this in the near future, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. But okay, so we lack spec, so yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know. You said sorry. Yeah, we, we need to be a bit careful whenever we say mesh, what we mean, because for many today, uh, there's a call thing called uh, Wi Fi Easy Mesh. That's not. Which yeah, okay. is not that's not what this, we're talking about. Is not this mesh, but yeah. uh, that that is what uh, industry seems to be going towards, rather than using the mesh BSs that we are discussing here. To be honest, yeah, 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 yeah. And and with easy mesh, obviously you can use MLO between each station and AP connection, and your APs can actually be stations for for that backbone connection. So yes. you get similar kind of uh, wireless backbone. 
that you get a mesh. It's not as dynamic based on the protocol itself, unless vendor extensions are used, but uh, it covers similar use cases and people for better or worse, call it mess. <laughs> so yeah. you need to be very careful when you say mess in, yeah. if you really mean the MPSS, which I'm, I'm, I'm sure in this context you, you did indeed mean, but uh, in general, you need to be careful what people will interpret from you, your use of mess as the, as the name for it. Well, it also uses for address frames and uh, thing, you know, but it's not, I mean, MBSS has what up to six addresses and all the other stuff in the spec. Yeah. So it's a different thing. So yeah, I don't think for mesh, there's much to say here. We just don't expect it to happen. Um, the other question would be like, eventually, you know, do we even support mesh? Uh, indefinitely, or you know, what happens with mesh code as as people move to other things? But I guess that will be a longer, longer, longer term discussion. Yeah. So in in IEEE, there was actually kind of related question, which is, can we just remove IPSS and mesh from the standard? And we decided not to do so. One reason, especially for mesh, was that there was an identified actual product use case out there today. Hmm. So we didn't want to stop defining something that actually is deployed. <laughs> deployed yeah. And I, the same answer would apply, in my opinion, to the question on upstream Linux kernel implementation. It's fair. I, well, I don't think we are quite there to be really concerning removing it. As, it long, is. as long as it's used, right? Sure. I mean, I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it becomes obvious that there's absolutely no use for that, uh, that we can identify sure that's different. It's different like the, the, you know, the five and 10 megahertz support that I think I will just remove because it's clearly not even possible for it to work. So, you know, who could possibly be using it um, if it's if it's not working, right? So, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm not saying mesh isn't working. I'm not saying mesh should be removed. It's just like over time. Yeah. I have automated test cases for mesh, so I, I know <laughs> if it stops working. But yeah, for five and ten gig, uh, mega channels, I don't, I don't yeah. do anything myself. So yeah, I have no way, no way of noticing if they actually have ever worked or stopped working. I kind of suspect they never really worked well, um, and I also think that potentially. Um, the way people do use it is when they do the whole clock adjustment and they just look like 20 megahertz channels because otherwise you get, I don't know, the five and 10 megahertz code is kind of tacked onto the side and has a lot of stuff missing. Um, there was something, some comment in the chat. Let's see, six address. Mesh has six address, right? But what was, was that a question? from before with mesh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Do, Kyle, do you want to go to your things now or should we? I mean, I think we, we okay, let's wrap up MLL or multi-link. Let's see if there's anything else that we need to discuss. Um, Cause that's basically the whole the large list of things here. Um, yeah, can you take the microphone? Or I, I'll take it to you. <laughs> yeah, no, please don't. <laughs> if we have any estimation or you have any information about when is it going to be ready, or at least the hardware, Drivers, so so yeah. So the question is: Are we? When is Wi-Fi seven going to be ready? Um, or start to, or uh, you know, starts to I appear. There is no hardware still available. Right now, I don't think there's hardware available. No, um, we have hardware. It's not available. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Greedy? Which one? Chinese company. What is the software stack on that? 
It's not even working yet. Maybe for a Now being produced. Uh, available. available. <laughs> okay, I never heard of it. Aha, uh -huh, that's how you know. Um, <laughs> um, uh, so, yes, there, there have been some uh, early Wi Fi 7 products that actually are currently available. Which I are believe. clearly not Wi Fi 7 because. Well, I mean, obviously, they are not <laughs> Wi Fi 7 certified yeah. because uh, that program has not launched. But uh, <laughs> as far as the Wi Fi 7 functionality as defined as the EHD in the IEEE draft that's being worked on, there are some companies who have published currently available devices that they call Wi-Fi 7 cable. Yeah. Um, and for, for this audience, one of them claims to be world's first open source Wi-Fi 7 <laughs> Yeah, from, a, from an upstream perspective, I think we will have our driver support getting pushed soon. Um, I guess Kala has the, what, the 12K driver coming, which I don't know if it's hooked up with all the multi-link yet, but So for IWO Wi-Fi, we'll have the multi-link. You have hardware sim, of course. It has all the multi-link support. <laughs> um, from a certification point of view, I don't know if there's a timeline that we could talk about. I don't think it was published, yeah. Um, I'm not even sure it's fixed yet. <laughs> like, it's still... Yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> um... Right, so so I yeah I, I don't think the question can be answered right now very easily like from an upstream perspective and when, you know even when we push our code, still the device won't be available and I don't I don't even know when the device will be available, so um, for for like for from an Intel device perspective, um, it's certainly the next generation device that will ship will ship with Wi-Fi seven capability, but. When that happens, don't ask me. Um, um, it's some time off. If you need to experiment with it in some way, you have hardware sim now, so you could do multi-link connections with host APD supplicant. Although we're still not even, you know, not even that code is all upstream or up is all present there yet. So um, it's still a long way to go, I think, for for all of it to really be available. Yeah, so what's currently in upstream is EHD configuration. Yes. So you can just get the new five capabilities without multi-link. And there's a set of interfaces starting to work with multi-link. I think it I think it's relatively complete for station side driver that has uh, internal MLME. So it might actually work, but obviously you don't ah, have. But you don't have any implementation of that, so. Uh, oh. We might. I don't actually know whether it's published or not. But yeah, OK. But so, so yes, I, I think the kernel interfaces are there for some architectures. No, all the kernel inter also for the for the Mac Edge 11, all the interfaces. Well, OK, yeah, there. maybe it actually is. From an inter interface yeah, yeah, point of view, yeah, it's go there. Go yeah, yeah, maybe the kernel We just don't have the, the, the MLME, the yes. SME yet. Yes, in, so we don't. And what's currently in line, there's a pending submission in supplicant for station sites uh, additions that that's public, publicly available, uh, mainly for the connect command, though. Yeah, but that's exactly that's so, only for so, so, that's so, again mostly for yeah. the non SME for the yeah, yes, offloaded yes, SME that, that's case. Not for so that yeah. that's that has been publicly contributed. Yeah. Okay. You know, not yet in upstream. And like I said, around or I said to Yoni earlier, around. The end of the week, sometime next week, we expect to start sending some code for host APD supplicant for multi-link, but um, we'll see. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean in, in that sense, uh, really soon there will be available source code. So that's from that yeah. viewpoint. There's no devices. I mean, <laughs> yeah, hardware, hardware wise, available. Yeah. I mean, we have announced our plans long time ago. Yeah, yes, but... we have customers who have launched devices. So in theory, yes, there are devices out there. Whether but you then you also need one... drivers that hook it all yeah, up. Yeah, whether you can get one that you can actually mess up with your own self-built kernel, probably not today. Yeah. 
Okay. Kata, do you want to come here for the other for the topics? No. <laughs> okay. Well, honestly, uh, it's not that much talk. So. Um, there's mine. So yeah, I only had three things in mind. I guess the most important uh, for me is the well, I wrote it here improved modular parameter. But basically, we have been talking about this for years. But uh, uh, there's more and more need of some sort of some sort of configuration of drivers per device. So let's say that like we ha I have three at 11k devices on the same host, and and when we want to you know, like uh, some set of configuration, like a firmware memory allocation. Do we allocate more memory for the, the stations client or clients or, or less memory for the clients and more memory for the actual data pattern? And this kind of configuration, it's not only at 11K, I think it pops up frequently, not frequently, but let's say once a year or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I don't have a solution for. I have been you know, like thinking about this on and off. Um, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. You know, like I have been thinking about uh, DevLink. The network folks are talking about DevLink a lot. So maybe they would be interested, in, uh, you know, like having some kind of configuration interface through Net uh, DevLink. But uh, that would also because at least. In at 11 case, we would like to know the parameters before we start the firmware and register to the stack. Yeah. So, so I think the DevLink, uh, you know, if we have some kind of dynamic DevLink interface. I I never looked at it. DevLink, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, well, I have only briefly. So, but I'm not very very optimistic about DevLink, and of course, uh, what always comes up is the dot uh, ini files. <laughs> and um, that's uh, I think that's you know, I don't like men personally but uh, you know if that's the only solution well I guess but but it's hard to do per device too like you'd have to encode the device name somehow yeah. or, or like so that, that we have cali calibration files now you know like uh, thermal calibration files in 11k uh, and they are per device so we have you know like a, a bus name you know like PCI dash and then mm. the PCI ID dot bin or something like that. But that's also not per device. If you have the same device, kind of device, multiple times on the same platform, you still can't differentiate. Uh, PC, there's a PCI ID. Right, but that's if you take the same PCI ID, if you take the same device and pl plug it in three times, like the same. Yeah, but uh, you know, there's a bus number. You know. Oh, you don't mean the PCI ID? You mean like the PCI bus you know, the ID, LS location PCI or, or... ID, basically. Then you do LSPCI, you get that. Yeah, but you don't mean the vendor number and the no, 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 sub, no, not the, you know, sub no, vendor the and ID, the device, the bus ID. but the bus location yeah, or, yeah. or yeah, the bus, yeah, 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 okay. But yeah, so I think you know, like this is more like wireless specific issue, so that uh, like is it though? I mean, yeah, well, I don't see it. There was one discussion with Greg. I wonder what driver was it. I can't remember anymore, but uh, you know, like it seems at least Ethernet drivers and you know, like they don't need anything like this. I don't know about the uh, graphics drivers. Uh, Do they not? I mean, I don't know. They some of them just reboot the firmware sometimes if you do certain F tool things, right? So yeah. You could do that, right? You could do say like we register, and then if you change this parameter, then we just have to restart the firmware. Yeah. yeah. So I guess if, if you would go through the link, it uh, you know like method of, then it would most likely mean something like that. Yeah. But we, we would need to register everything. I think you know like if some uh, stack capability changes. Basically. Right. If some capability changes, that would yeah. be problematic. Yes. If you just talk about like memory allocation inside the firmware or something, then 
I might just need to. Yeah, you know, like a limit of clients, countries, and, and also. Oh, like, because that would impact your sort of capabilities towards the stack too. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then might even you know like affect some feature that you know. Yeah. So I don't have a list of examples right now, but basically there seems to be various requests that you know like certain product or something they want something specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then for uh, another type of product, it's completely different. So, and uh, you know, like in prop uh, or let's say internal drivers, they seem to use the dot ini ini approach. So, and they have like, I think for some of drivers, it's like hundred different options for the their. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that's a good. Um, I'm not really sure that's a good topic to discuss here. It feels more general and more broad. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, back, back to that, I, I'm also you know like I, I don't maybe, know what's the yeah best way forward and and uh, but we need to put it up here so in case people have ideas and. Um. I mean, I, I can tell you that we also have a way in our internal driver version to have an INI file. It's loaded like a firmware file, and then we look through it and do things based on it. Yeah. And we do things for like testing or, um, you know, I don't know, if you have a pre-production device that doesn't have a MAC address assigned, you can use, use it to assign a MAC address. Um, so you don't have to do it every, you know, don't have to do it again every time you preload the driver or something. You just have to install that file. Um, various various use cases for it, but you know, effectively all those use cases are pre pro or most of these use cases are pre-production, so we don't really need that upstream. Um, yeah. It's also not per device, right? Because of the way it works, it's it's just one one global thing. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't have a good solution. Yeah, hmm. um, me neither. So also one uh, uh, option I've been thinking of somehow so someone extending get... module parameters and uh, adding a device ID, some sort of to that as well. But uh, I think people are more like wanting to get rid of module parameters instead of extending it. So I doubt that will, that will not apply either yeah but what would you do right for device module parameters also seems tricky <laughs> um yeah i don't know yeah it's not easy it's, it's basically a simpler thing but it, it's a little bit of a you know, it's kind of like a reconfigurable hardware thing, right? Where, you know, the driver, the way the model we driver is like you have a way, you know, you have a fixed hardware and then you have a driver that knows how to deal with that hardware, right? And here now you have a piece of hardware that has sort of different use cases. You can configure it into different, almost being different pieces of hardware because of the way the firmware works and things, right? Um, and then... And then the driver starts working on it, right? But then it's kind of fixed into that model for what it now became. But I you know, maybe that's a different way of thinking about it. But um, I don't know any precedents or something like, or uh, sorry, any precedent like for for such a thing um, right now off the top of my head. So yeah, I don't. Don't really think I have a good idea. Oh, here. Um, oh yeah. So, ask people. I mean, yeah. like, ask other people, right? Like, ask around here. And, um, I think is is like I don't think we will solve this generally within the Wi-Fi. Community. Yeah, definitely not. And I think we kind of make a decision, you know, like ourselves, 
I'm sure that network folks at least want to say very. We could make a decision for ourselves, but you know, <laughs> it might conflict with other things. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. uh, if we would go through the devlik solution, so. Yeah, but you have to have something that you hang it on, right? So you'd have to have a DevLink. Um, I, I, yeah, actually, but, but, I don't know. I mean, I mean, like a, I guess you could layer your driver and say you register with DevLink, and that in turn causes it to you know register with you register it like differently to the actual Wi-Fi part of the driver. And then if you do some changes in DevLink, you kind of have to redo the Wi-Fi part, but it gets a little complicated. Yeah, yeah but that's what I'm thinking as well. So, yeah, but, or, you know, like something like totally, if we are changing parameters, you know, like uh, there's some way to group them, you know, like so that it would be an autom atomic change. Yeah. And uh, then we'll totally shut down you know, like, or do a remove in a driver and then a probe again or something. Yeah, but then you don't have anywhere to store the parameters because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but in a way doing that. Yeah. Not, yeah, not yeah. like a full remove, but but basically starting over everything. But uh, how would that how would that work from uh, stack and user space point of view? But they would stack in user space? It would just be like if you remove the module, I mean, or, or like... You yeah. unplug the device. I mean, it wouldn't really. That should be okay. I mean, that should basically work. Yeah. If you already made a connection, that might be problematic because sure. obviously it will be broken and may not be reestablished immediately. Although I think the supplicant does, in fact, recognize that WLAN like interfaces went away and came back or something. But. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not, you know, like, you have to know what you are doing, so it's not like some yeah, while, uh, while connecting to yeah, but, yeah. but So I think, for me, the DevLink approach is bad because of that means that we would have to have some kind of detection when the interface is registered so that we can send the par new parameters. You know, like, uh, let's say that, like, an access point or something, so that, uh, I don't know, do you have to have some kind of daemon running or something that, you know, because you can do it on boot, you know, like a loaded module. And then, because there's, you know, like, you don't know when the interface is ready. So you need to wait for the interface before you can. Oh, but you just, all you need for that is uh, like some UDEV rule or something. I mean, that's, yeah, oh, that's oh. not actually that hard to do. With module parameters, it's nice because uh, most distributions have a text file and you can enter uh, fair, settings there and then it's fully loaded when the driver is loaded. Or yeah, I, I, I don't think that's I don't think that's a major concern, okay. I, or I wouldn't think that's a major concern because you can have like a like a UDEF rule if a specific device appears and then you just trigger a script or something and that sets the things and that's easy to do um as, assuming you're running udev but you know we gotta have so, some infrastructure by the way is <laughs> udev still used with systemd how is it i have no idea i yeah. it's there though like you can still have the rules and everything right so yeah it's not like yeah we we have like for instance we have a rule that we routine, routinely install or tell people to use um when a firmware dump or firmware assert occurs and then we can collect all that information and dump it into a file together with like the syslog and things. So yeah. um, that's a similar script. And that happens as soon as the firmware dump, a device dump, core dump node appears in SysFS. And that's via UDEF detected. And you know that works pretty well. So I don't think that type of thing is an issue. It's more an issue of sequencing. Like if this thing comes up, you know, Wi-Fi comes up immediately and then you kick it out again because you reconfigured it, but you know, maybe the supplicant was already running because it was waiting for Wi-Fi to appear and things like that, right? So you might have some sequencing issues there if you do it that way. Unless you say, okay, you have to run this tool before a Wi-Fi will even appear, but then, you know, what if something breaks? 
you don't even get any anything right so yeah yeah, yeah. Um, everyone will be wondering like what the hell just happened right so um yeah maybe some kind of proto you know like like you said discussing with people and uh, and maybe prototyping and sending yeah. some rfc patches and, uh, and like I said, I think maybe a good way to think about it might be some sort of reconfigurable hardware. Like, you know, look at, I don't know, how does an FPGA handle it? Well, I guess an FPGA, you program it and then it appears on the PCI bus, right? It doesn't really appear before that, or it appears as multiple devices and you one to program it and one is the actual code that you wrote to run on it. Um, how does, I don't know what could be other examples. Yeah, I don't really know, but I don't know. It feels like there should be some cases already where you have a way of reconfiguring your hardware, but maybe those all have like two different, two different uh, planes, so to speak, right? A control plane where you actually reconfigure it and then sort of a client plane where you know, the stuff happens that you configured. Whereas with the Wi-Fi case, that's not true, right? You just have a single PCI device. Yeah. Um, you could pretend there is another plane in, in between, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's like, what, you know, like we would have to do. Have yeah, a bus I... and, you know, do this one thing on PCI and then, you know, register the driver to it differently. But that's also kind of messy. Yeah. I Yeah, I don't know. It is a good question. I mean, it does come up, and yeah. I think it, I I expect it will come up more and more in the future, because um, you know there was all this stuff about hardware that has like multiple chains, but you could partition them and things like that. Or even the case of multilink, right? You might have three hardware that even slightly more complex, but you might have three pieces of hardware and register them individually or register them as a single combined device um, so that they can do multi-link, right? I don't know how that's yeah. going to work, but yeah. I don't even know what you're planning to do there. Is it going to be like all F 12K or would you have, you know, one is F 11, one is F12, and they still should be together as a multi-link device. I, I have no idea what that, what you're doing, but hey. <laughs> I've always questioned the hardware design that you're doing, so. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I guess this is so not, not a good solution inside, but I think I need to do something, so let's see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, um, no, no good ideas from me. Yeah. Uh, a second thing I had was about, well, I guess there's not much of discussion here, but just I wanted to mention as well, uh, about maintenance files. So the network folks were uh, telling me that they are cleaning up a maintenance file, you know, like I was checking our entries as well and you know like there's someone people who haven't been you know seen in five or ten years even so so i think that that's something also on a rainy day could be good to go over and yeah i, I suppose i just need someone to ping everyone if they should still be listed yeah. or I... and uh, and uh, like uh maybe you know like propose new maintainers it's all going to fall on you if you remove <laughs> someone else. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I was expecting You just that, remove so. the entry for that driver and it matches the driver's catch all. So, <laughs> I mean. Um, but, but we have, you know, like, I'm really ha happy about real tech, for example. Yeah. So, so yeah. like I mentioned in the dinner, so, you know, like, how it was in five years ago or something, and, and now they are. Yeah, for sure. Also, media, media tech, also. Yes. Oh, yes, media tech as well. Ooh. It's great progress. Um, yeah, but okay, so just to know that, that everyone is aware of this, so of course this happens mostly behind the scenes, but still good to mention. Um, 
I have enough trouble as is to keep updating the files that we have. <laughs> Like or the pieces everywhere across the tree that are relevant, and of course keeping track of uh, wireless extensions and <laughs> all the old ancient lib eight hundred two eleven that someone again found a bug in the other day, like just yesterday or something. Oh, um, technically yes. <laughs> Do I want to be the maintainer of wireless extensions? No, I mean, I'd rather they go away. Oh, that is a good question though. That yeah. reminds me, we did remove like basically all of the wireless extension support when with multi-link. So if you have multi-link, you don't even see like a wireless extensions event. You don't see the SSID anymore. There's some stuff that was removed there. Oh, that, do we need to fix that or do we just kind of not worry about it until things break or not break or because i mean it's kind of a regression but it's kind of not a regression until you actually have a supplicant that's able to do multi-link and hardware that's able to do multi-link so but how would that be a regression you will never hit this case because for multi-link you need to specifically tell you want to have a multi-link no but you will hit that case if you like update your sub your kernel update your supplicant update your hardware and then use YCD or something to show what network am I connected to. Oh, so or... it's, a, it's a independent application. Trying yeah, to so trying to like query information from wireless extensions. Um, I guess we should just cover it here. Pardon? I, I guess we could cover it here as a discussion topic. In, in oh, in well, the... yeah, you could add it somewhere there. Yeah. Relate to this, could we have some kind of fat warning in a kernel whenever wireless extensions is used, but you know, like it's deprecated, don't use it then. Sorry? Sleep 30 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes, I like it. I like it. <laughs> no, it's not mod probe. It's like, the, I, I mean, it's built in, right? Like, I mean, for our driver, I've disabled wireless extensions ever since, like, I don't know, a decade ago. Um, Well, I mean, it's not the drivers, it's the stack still advertising or still supporting it, right? I mean, some very, very old drivers are basically wireless extensions only, like, I don't know, Orinoco or... I don't, I you was know. using wireless extensions and, and also staging drivers, unfortunately. But yeah, okay, staging drivers, I really don't care about though, because those are just, you know, if we... <laughs> decide that's not something they can do, then that from that point on, they won't compile, which is fine. Um, yeah, but when we did we try to remove wireless extensions? Was it like two years ago? Did we try? Ago? I don't think we did. Three we? years ago. I don't remember. We know. implemented something that is subject to be removed yeah. a year uh, ago. I, I mean, I think we died. Theoretically. <laughs> we tried to remove it, but then it was added back because of some regressions. I'm pretty sure about that. I don't know. I mean, even I think Linux, even you were saying you have still a tool that uses it yeah, to yeah, show know, in your desktop or something. So I mean, but I'm not saying that in public. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think you know, like was it Linux or something added back? I don't remember honestly. We removed that. We by default disabled it. But, uh, Maybe it was that, yeah. But we really should get rid of it. Why would we have recommended the plan to remove it? Uh, I don't know. Is there something like that? Let me oh, check. there is. Somewhere on the documentation. Maybe we should start talking about that more. Or I can start talking about it. I can be the bad guy here. So. Would be so happy to get rid of it. Uh, I don't know. Where should we look? Not aware of it. I'm pretty sure we discussed this a long, long, very long time ago. Yeah. User space API. No, that's just documentation. Yeah. 
anyway, the point is we've ignored it for MLO that so that will cause some kind of regression because if you establish an MLO connection, I think you will not even get information, but certain information you won't be able to get because it doesn't make sense. Like what's the frequency of your connection if you have three links? Um, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to even ask that question, right? But I, I, I'm kind of inclined to just wait and see and just leave it like this and say, hey, you're using MLO, so it, this doesn't make any sense. And then if we get enough complaints, yeah, maybe we can think about it, but. I, um. Yeah, I don't have a good. Do you remember that page? Pardon? Do you remember that page in the chat? Wex statement. Oh. <laughs> I. Uh... It's not readable to people who are not logged in. I. Uh... I barely remember. <laughs> Oh, that's already seven and a half years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it doesn't say, uh, sounds like my style. Yeah, I was thinking the same. Yeah, we should. Some. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I I actually did not remember this. <laughs> um, but this is more from a written from a driver point of view, right? I mean, that's the best I could find. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. So maybe we discussed that, that in a summit in 2015. Um, Pardon? This is 2015, so maybe we discussed that in the previous wireless summit. Do I, between then and now? Yeah. No, I did in 2015. Oh, well. Yeah, this was January 2015. What? Don't even. How did you find that link? <laughs> Google. Fair enough. Fifteen Ottawa. That doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> what? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't anyway, back you know to my issue at hand. Um Uh, there were a bunch of cases where the wireless extensions just don't make any sense. Like you're asking for the frequency, the frequency of the connection. What am I supposed to say? So, um, I mean, if there's only one active link, maybe arguably you could say that is the the frequency, but otherwise it doesn't make a lot of sense. So we just kind of short circuited it all and um, basically don't, don't, there's nothing that comes back. So I think, what would we break? pardon? What would we break? That's the question, right? I mean, you know, Kali's desktop tool that shows his connection, uh, some other tools like YCD maybe, some, I don't even know what, 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 what would break. Yeah, no, I know. The tool wouldn't, wouldn't function because the information wouldn't be there. I don't care about someone's status failing, but uh, it actually prevents something else from happening because it doesn't notice there's a connection available, that kind of breaking. Yeah, I don't, I'm not aware of any tools that even do anything other than sort of status with it at this point. Yeah, I'm tempted to say just ignore it and see what happens. Yeah. It's very, yeah. It, it will be a little difficult situation because, you know, we would have a re kernel regression 
a long time ago, basically, right? And only once people have actually a new version of the supplicant and everything, then it would start breaking. It's like, okay, what happened here? Um, but it would mean to to actually worry about it would mean that we would actually have to test it and try to find tools that might use it and you know what would it mean and implement everything in kind of the best f best possible way um and it might be quite a bit of complexity to answer the question what is the frequency like if you know there are two links that are active um what do you do right uh yeah It's all built into CFG to 11. Yeah, exactly. yeah, but even then, what is, you know, what can you even do? Like, if I have two links on 2.4 and 6 gigahertz, and someone asks me, what's the frequency of the connection? Yeah, but what if there are two active links? <laughs> First one, by what ordering? By band order? By, you know, frequency order? By, by link ID order that the access point determined kind of randomly? <laughs> You know, I mean, as, as long as you provide some information so that the tool the user space doesn't break, I think we're fine. Then you can say, hey, we are in new. Well, uh, yeah, so okay. I guess you could be, say, yeah. Yeah, the information is not. I could good. add the two frequencies so you get something like, <laughs> like 8,400 megahertz. I mean, the problem is we don't really know when a user, something in user space would break. I mean, what. What breaks if you give incorrect the frequency or you give only one of uh, three possible frequencies? Probably nothing. Right. What breaks if you don't give a link indication? That could potentially, I could see something failing. Yeah, we didn't remove everything, right? It's just that those things were that were kind of, what, what do we do here? It's just like, okay, don't do it at all, right? Um, so it's not like Wex is completely disabled. Oh, now. so maybe I was wrong. So some events are disabled. No, it's not about yeah events and um, also some IOCTOs, I think, just don't return information now. But yeah, it's definitely not everything. I'd actually have to look, but like, the one thing I'm pretty sure about is that we don't even give in connect event or something like that. Like, you know, and that one might actually care matter, right? I mean, um, so yeah, probably not that hard. Yeah. You know? I don't want, I just don't want to do it. It feels wrong. It's like, you know, we're 25 years past wireless extensions and we're still trying to pull it forward into um, you know into the new next spec right 28 years or something like this stuff is from what 96 right 26 by the time that Wi-Fi 7 ships it will be <laughs> more years what if you prevent wireless extension from calling the all if the driver is using a lot of consent then people using Oh, you mean if it's the driver is capable of MLO, then we could prevent, then we could basically say, hey, you know, this is a new generation hardware. Why are you using a 25 year old yes. tool with it? People who got complaints to the project and then the, the answer seemed to be we don't support this one because we have our code is old, we're not using the new API, so the driver doesn't work with this tool. And then either they would fix the tool or the. Or stop using it. I think. <laughs> So they would be kind of hardware dependent. So you would only notice a regression once you update your hardware and you would basically say it's like, you know, I don't know, I have a Bluetooth 3 chip now and, uh, sorry, Bluetooth low energy or something and you just can't use it without a new hard with new software. Yeah. Uh, like market, market like that, Wi-Fi five, 7 is a new thing, so we don't want to use wireless extensions at all anymore or something. Uh, yeah. I mean, that could be also a good way to sort of start thinking about deprecating it yeah. more, right? Because yeah, the software exactly. would be like, either you don't work with the new chips that are shipping next year or now or whenever, or you update. Um, that could motivate people. Yeah. Well, I like that idea. And we wouldn't have to think about <laughs> trying to forward port all of the mess. Um, yeah, it could work.
Yeah, it's maybe not a bad idea. Yeah, probably. More technical reasons to do it, though, with Wi-Fi 7, because, you know, you don't have the frequency, you don't have, you know, the BSS ID anymore. Um, you, you know, a lot of the terminology changes. Yeah, that might actually be a simple patch, too. Yeah. And then we'll see what the distros say and what tools they find that are using wireless extensions. I'm sure Red Hat still uh, ships some, but, or, you know, everyone, basically. Company, Pardon? Is there distros by people, including Wexus support? Oh, they are. Yeah. Connecting with this, I'm going to have to memorize the way. It's any way to know which devices are supported by Wexus. What do you mean, which devices are supported? For example, you are connecting that extensions at all, and you want to deprecate it. Oh, you mean you want like a list of hardware that's supported in upstream? I, I think there's kind of a list on the wiki, but I'm not really sure it's maintained well. Um, we used to have like, you know, this page, uh, but, you know, I don't know. That's very old. I don't think anyone's been maintaining it for, you know. Yeah, but isn't the list of drivers which you don't use CFG 8211 or MAC 8211? Say that again, Kalle. So that uh, I mean that uh, all drivers which don't use either CFG 8211 or MAC 8211 are using wireless extensions. Yes, but there's only like a handful of those left. Exactly, but I mean, like in a way, it's simple to combine the list. No, but if you want, like, what hardware is supported? Oh, you mean like, uh, like commercial names, physical device ID, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking like it, the number of drivers is I don't know, like seven or something. And uh, I, I mean, in staging, we have of course more. And there's out of three drivers as well, but no. But once you once you get to this Wi-Fi seven thing, you'd have to have also a list of like you know this is the hardware that now supports Wi-Fi seven, so that hardware won't work with wireless extensions anymore. Um, but I mean, again, you can sort of derive it from the drivers, right? Because you have the PCI ID tables in the drivers and the USB ID tables in the drivers. Um, so it depends what you want to use it for, but. Yeah, is so okay. So I guess the question is, is there an easy way to find if a specific device is supported or not? I, yeah, you could, yeah. Yeah, or in the case of our driver, like a lot of the devices have a similar ID or same ID even, or the driver has like a catch all to match on everything and then just decides at runtime which device it is um, based on other information. So that's sometimes harder to do. Yeah, I'm not aware of that. Um, any like sort of common list, I guess you could have, you know, you could ask us Intel, right? What are the devices? and you know, get that information, but you'd probably have to ask it for each vendor, which is from an, up, which is difficult, right? I understand. From an upstream perspective, I'm not aware of any good way of doing it in like a unified way. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I mean the the way to do it in the in the code to deprecate wireless extensions would be to just check if you know multi-link support is there and then go through the code and remove the wireless extensions once multi-link is there right um which 
that simple in the code, right? I don't need to know the device identification. I just need to know whether it got registered with or without multi-link support, right? So, yeah. Can't be do it for all Wi-Fi CNN devices. I mean, like, like at 10 But that's basically multi-link, right? I mean, uh, well, well, we are not supporting multi-link right now, so. But then it's not a Wi-Fi 7 device. <laughs> well, yeah, well, true. But uh, you could use uh, Pi. Oh. You mean once it has EHT Phi support? Yeah. Does it matter? I mean, well, uh, to me, on practically, we get rid of wireless extensions, so that's why I'm just trying to. Yeah, but practically, like there's, or I think there are good technical reasons to, to, uh, like stop with multi-link, and less so with EHT. Okay. So it's an easier, you know, an easier thing to claim. Hey, you know, with with multi-link, this really can't work, right? Um, and eventually for any driver that does eht it's also really supposed to do multi-link otherwise it's not wi-fi 7 and not okay, even yeah. 11 be right i mean it's not really supposed to to be that way right it's i, I understand that everyone's doing it in the intermediate stages right like we sure. also did eht first because that's simple and we even do eht connections without multi-link which is supposed to not be that way but um, you know, everyone's doing that because it's easy and it's clear that the two are kind of orthogonal. But from a spec perspective, I believe they are combined. And from a certifications perspective, with Wi-Fi 7, certainly they are combined. So I think that might matter like right now in the short term. But, you know, once yeah. you actually get to this being a product, yeah. I, it won't really matter. I agree with you. Yeah. What was the patch this yeah, year? So has already on the Oh, nice. And the pass has the discussion when we did actually disable it internal and it made it unselectable. <laughs> okay, yeah. Ah. So that was that's the history for those who want to repeat that experience. <laughs> that was that's just before the page was created in Wikis and doesn't that page there was a reaction from this discussion. But that federal case that actually seems to have approved six zero and the fact that we implement that is closed, I'm assuming it's done for Fedora. For Fedora, yes, but we were talking about Yeah, I know. I know. That, yeah. that there's one distro that has done this. Yeah, okay. So fair, I, I fair guess uh, so we could talk about how you know like combine this all that uh, you know, we have Wi Fi seven coming up, Fedora has disabled it. So, and try to push our, uh, our distros also to disable the wireless extension. I mean, we can just disable. I think I think the disable it with Wi-Fi 7 is, is really is a good idea because it is a new hardware generation. There are good reasons for it, the, um, the multi-link and everything. And... Um, but couldn't it, we also push for user space to get rid of wireless extension? Yeah, but that's basically pushing for it, right? Because as people will get Wi-Fi 7 hardware, it will basically mean either you stop using that tool or you update that tool, but both of them have the effect of moving them off wireless extensions, even for Wi-Fi 6 or yeah, 5. Yeah, but I mean, like, whatever. maybe I'm more like a marketing guy here, but like <laughs> pushing, you know, like making people aware of this in advance. And I, there is no like way that. to make people aware of it. There's Sorry? just... You know, how do you make people aware of it? You break their stuff. I mean, you, I, I don't mean, think you, you know, we have uh, Linux Weekly News, Twitter, whatnot. Uh, nowadays, uh, I'm old school. Yeah, so. but that only reaches the developers, not you know, like the fringe people who are doing that little gadget thing yeah, for their desktop and wireless extensions. Uh, so sure, why shouldn't we do it? Yeah, I guess you could say, hey, you know, uh, but let's this yeah, is you know, coming. Telling people and maybe distros listen and they could. But what are the distros supposed to do? Like, they can't do anything. I mean, they could go like Fedora and disable it right now, but yeah. that would just be more pain um, than waiting for us to say, hey, you know, with Wi-Fi 7, it's no longer supported. And then it would continue working for all the people who didn't update their hardware, right? Um, the only thing I can see is that we would say, like, look, this is coming. There are reasons we wanted this. We cannot support this anymore with Wi-Fi 7. Um, look at your software stack, see if it contains wireless extensions. And if you do have it, then don't update your hardware for now. And once you update your hardware, you know, you need to update your software stack. Well, why but, can't we say that, uh, get rid of wireless 
so that if you see that you are using ballistics in some way, sure, get rid of it, get rid sure, of it yeah, as soon yeah. as you can, yeah, because otherwise you will be in trouble in future, or, yeah, or something like that, you know, like somehow make people understand that uh, you know it will not work forever. Well, just to be fair, we are not dropping it necessarily, we sure. are, so we are just stating that it will not work with future hardware, which is yeah. different yeah. things, yeah, exactly, yeah. right. And I think Kalle wants to, to go towards like more dropping it. And, well, you know, well, I'm not, I'm not worried we drop, repeat that experience. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. No, no, I'm not saying that we are dropping it now, but I am saying that people need to be prepared. Yeah, but, you know, five years from now, if, like, you know, we dropped it for a Wi-Fi 7, everyone's got their hardware. Like, all the developers will have hardware Wi-Fi 7, 8, 9, or whatever at the time, right? And so then it, it will be more... Um, you know, it will effectively have dropped it that way anyway, right? Because either you have your old tools, your old distros, and your old hardware, and it still works, or you have like new hardware, and then you need the new support, and you need new tools that still that will be better. So I, I yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's yeah. I think it's a good idea to do it with Wi-Fi 7. There is some good reasons for it. Like you don't even know what the frequency is, right? Um, and yeah, it's a way, it's easy to detect, check if there's EHT or if there's multi-link or something. Um, there doesn't exist yet, so it will only hit like people once they start buying new hardware. And um, yeah. I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with that approach. So are we going to do an announcement or not? I guess we'll post a patch and try to so that's no. tell people. I mean, <laughs> do a... Well, I guess once the patch is merged and everything, we could, you could send, like, we could send another message or something, right? And try to cross post it to LWN or, in a sense yeah. um, or something like that. I, yeah. It does happen sometimes, yeah. Like you know, at least I have seen. So a question was about can we add a warning to the kernel, man? At least I have seen warnings in other such systems. But when you call the w, WX API the first time, and then you show a message. Yeah, I would really like that as well. Yeah. Yeah, for example, so. you already get that. Oh, I have config. Get what? If you use I have config, uh, I usually that you get a warning. Get a war, yeah. You, I mean, you don't get a warn on, you get like a rate limited warning. Yeah, yeah. On the first you, call, you do get a warning on one of these things. One I, oh, I usually don't I remember which one. I don't think you get a stack trace and all that, like a warn on. Oh, oh, you just get like a oh, one yeah. line oh, print that it. says, yeah, Hey, yes, yes, your yes, tool yes, is yes. using this deprecated API here. Yeah, yeah, but useless, yeah, not the right thing to do. Um, Maybe we could mention that Wi Fi 7 as well in that warning message so that we are not oh, supporting. You mean add a warning now that says, hey, your tool will not work with Wi Fi 7. Yeah. You're not using that. You're not using it. Yeah. I think earlier we do it, uh, the better it is for yeah, users. So that, that's even more effective than my announcement. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess we could do that. And then finally, bury waxed thirty years later. <laughs> but I guess we can do that for you know, like old drivers. Why not? Well, no, I actually, mean, like we, can. we can. We can. But we have to add a warning for each drive, or do we have a? No, you have a common Wix. Oh, so so but I mean, that's that's the other question. Do you really want to add a warning to the drivers that have no other API than Wix? That doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe CFTH. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. our drivers are ancient, so. And we should, I mean, we can, we removed some drivers. We can think about removing more drivers, but um, that's... Oh, yeah, that reminds me, but I should create a wiki page about drivers in danger of being removal. And in danger. 
And, and you know, because it comes up, but I don't have a you know like a central place where I have the information about mm. or the analysis of the driver. So that basically, you know, like uh, when is the last commit or you know, like that, that won't work because someone is finding these automatic security issues. Yeah. Static or duplicated words yeah. in comments. <laughs> like how they feel that that kind of changes commonly. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. But but at least uh, I was thinking of removing one driver. I forgot which one. Well, which ones are that? Driver. But someone came up and he said that hey, I'm still using it. So I gave up. Yeah, Seriously? I don't know what's, the, what's the real lifetime of a hardware component? I don't know, but apparently very long. <laughs> but I think it was surprising, but somehow. Well, I mean, speaking about it. hardware lifetime, I had a customer ask me about the very first Intel Wi Fi product, like a couple of months ago. <sighs> and they were still using it. And it was a system that wasn't even like from our point of view, this stuff is ancient. It doesn't exist anymore. From their point of view, it was still supported for their customer. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything else about who that was and where it was. And <laughs> but it was like, and we even I even found someone in Intel who was still able to look to find the documentation for it to actually answer the question that they had. <laughs> Which actually pointed towards, though, that the hardware was not our hardware, but their hardware was deteriorating. And the way they have worked around that issue pointed to their hardware deteriorating. So, so anyway, we were talking about drivers here. Um, wireless. So we have like Atmel. No. Yeah. And there's 8076. I think. Maybe I'm still a maintainer for that driver. Atmel, uh, what's Intersil, the Orinoco, and Host AP and P54? P54 is. P54, that's not right. to right. yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's actually also a modern driver. So. Yeah. Um, and. Oh, Cisco thing here. Yeah, Aero. Yeah, Aero. 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 That's someone was still using? I think it was Aero, yeah. I, yeah. I have one of those. But you have I might have one too. But <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a laptop with PC card uh, in the test. Does it still power on? <laughs> has it been powered on in the last decade? <laughs> yes. Yes, it has. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Within the last five years. Uh -huh. <laughs> Actually, even more recent. Last, uh, I did power. I, I didn't need to find an old backup. So within the last two years, an old backup. Okay. Oh, that's so scary. It did boot up. Yeah, just fine. <laughs> Once I connected power, I, I did not update the kernel. Though. Once I removed all the dust. <laughs> yeah, update the kernel. Installed a new Fedora on it with without wax. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's continue here. Um, Kalle, sorry, I co-opted your no, no. talk That's again good. about uh, something uh, else. Yeah, I'm really happy about that. Uh, <laughs> while it's extension, <laughs> deep equation. So I need to buy you a beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, so yeah. So state of wireless. So uh, I was just in you know, like uh, what people are happy about, uh, not happy about, and all that. So and like we have now a common tree finally. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, like uh, we could discuss a bit about that and what we think of it, and you know, like uh, it works well. Flow and all that. So as far as I'm concerned, it works well. So, makes it easier for driver slash dependencies. Yeah. Driver, uh, it's a bit more communication between you and me, but yeah, but uh, no but, one else needs to work, care about yeah, that. And yeah, and, and it's also you know if someone is away, you know, it's easier to back up and all that. So in a way, I, I think it was good. Uh, yeah, it uh, works. Just, it works well. I think it's... I, I haven't seen anyone complaining, at least to me, so about it. So and, no. and the network folks seem to be happy. Except about merging wireless to wireless next, but 
I have three parts still, but I, I'm going to do that soon. Yeah, that's a different discussion. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's okay. So. Uh, no, I think this is working. Um, I. Why are the stuck git goes into net dot git goes into Linux dot git? Okay. And Mac at two eleven. No, it doesn't exist anymore. Oh, it doesn't exist. What I'm pulling for now? <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking. That hasn't been updated in I don't know years. Uh, I, I mean, or yeah, maybe no not years. Change. But... Why is that? Okay. And also drivers go directly into this new into this tree now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we have wireless and wireless mixed things. Okay. Okay. So and uh, there's an old wireless tree also for Tony and Bill. So don't don't use that one. Well, that's okay. very old, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 That's so, very. So it's old. like they have a group wireless. So. Okay. Yeah, so so my tree hasn't been updated in nine months now, like since the beginning of this year. Mac edit to eleven, Mac edit to eleven next. Yeah. Um, okay. When we switch, I don't know what the release was, but you know, apparently, mid January, none of this existed, <laughs> or none of this was updated anymore. Maybe I should just delete those trees. I don't know. It doesn't. They don't have any branches or anything that would be. Well, if they're not used, I think. Killing would be good, then people would get an error like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think someone else was, was also using your old trees. So. Yeah. Was it? I don't know. Yeah, like few years ago. Okay. I mean, I have some some branch. I, maybe I should just like remove the master branch because or I have some other branches that might be of sort of historic interest. Yeah. Or like, edit as well. So that's yeah. Yeah, but it's just a merge of net, so it's not. It doesn't have any content. Excuse me. Um, but like I have here, I see a next, I have the, the RTNL work when I did the, the RTNL locking reductions in the stack and um, multi BSS ID, <laughs> which I really don't want to think about right now because of all the security issues, but okay, fair enough. Uh, some other things like clean up some other branches that were separate. Um, they're probably not really interesting anymore, but sort of for for historic reasons, it felt like I should keep them. So, well, you can also just push those branches into the new tree. Just the branches, nobody. Or in the whole tree, you know. Like yeah, or in the whole tree. Yeah. yeah. Like a market to have a legacy or something. Yeah. Software museum. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, those are not used anymore, and also no more drivers, wireless drivers trees. Oh yeah, I saw those. <laughs> Did you remove those? No, I didn't do anything. Yeah, I would also. Yeah, we really haven't uh, met in, in person for a long time. That feels like an old thing, and it's nine, only nine months. But... Yeah, and so now also I think something uh, to mention is that uh, before we did so that during merge window, we didn't take any patches to next. But uh, now yeah. we did a uh, this kind of uh, git hack so that uh, they have a separate for next branch which goes to linux next and the linux next maintainer doesn't want to have new code while during the merge window yeah, yeah. so so now we basically disable that branch during merge window so we can take patches all the time yeah, yeah and yeah. at least for me that that has been a big help so that you know like uh, when the patches don't accumulate too much right like they did before mm -hmm. And I, I think it, for for our people, uh, it's also easier. I would assume so, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so wireless and wireless next is the same semantics as net and net, net next. Exactly. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah. And then they roll up to net, it's net next, and then they roll up to Linux dot get like Torvalds slash Linux dot git um, in, uh, yeah, in just the normal way, right? Merge window, pull request, yeah. And, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so on we are using batch work quite a lot. I, I think you are, Johannes, also actively using batch work, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so, um, and, uh, well, back to like batch. Well, I, I guess it's better not to go to that discussion. So not right now. <laughs> people are well, at, at, not anymore. But at one point, there were quite a lot of complaining to me that 
I should be looking at Baxilla Bax. Who? Your management? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but... Uh, your manager, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing for 11 gags. We, we actually yeah. monitored Bugzilla in an automated way and translated some, most of it into our own internal bug tracking. Oh, so, so why, well, that's why you are so active. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and then of course those bugs don't get very high priority necessarily because they, yeah. But, uh, well, that's more larger topic than just wireless. So, yeah. 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 Uh, I think one, something we have been discussing with Johannes is, um, so my script now sends, e sends an email when I uh, take a patch, but I think Johannes is using the B4 script. No, I'm not using P4, oh, B4, sorry, imagine, no. Imagine. Okay. I'm, yeah. Well, I have my own scripting, but okay, yeah, um, yeah. yeah but uh, we have been thinking about uh, this, this kind of bot uh, network, yeah, it so that it sends an email, so that uh, I think it will help that uh, you would also get emails from your patches. Yeah, yeah. Could so I've been, it's on my to-do list to okay. uh, request the bot, but I haven't done it. Mm. But I guess that's okay for you. Yeah, yeah, sure. We we can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I was too lazy to send emails and my scripting doesn't do it. And I don't always like I commit the patch, but I'm not even sure I want to send the email right away because I might remove it again before I push it if something breaks, because uh, you know, I want to commit it and then test it. And I uh, I do even sometimes I just commit the patch and then I review it. Um and sometimes I will you know, start fixing little things that I want changed, like white space or something, right? And then find another thing and then realize that, no, I have to remove it again. So, um, yeah, the, the bot that only acts when you actually push would be would be better, yeah. Although I'm not sure, I think it uses the link tag to identify what the patch was, so uh, the, the, and Linus said he doesn't like the link tag so much, so there's still ongoing discussions there. But I, was, I think quite a lot of people use it like Yeah. So I, yeah. So it's also, have, I mean, have. it's also like, I mean, what's the argument? I, to me, the argument doesn't make sense. The argument is like, oh, if there's a link tag, that means there's information at the other end of the link. So I'm going to click it just in case there's information. Like, no, the link just means there's a link. If you need more information, you can check if there is more information there. But like, it doesn't, the fact that there's a link doesn't mean that there is something interesting on the other side of the link. I, it's like, you know, I mean, does the fact that there is a link mean there has to be something that's not captured in the commit already on the other side of the link? I don't know. To me, it's it's a weird. But you will never know until you click. You need to have review everything yeah. about the commit methods, including <laughs> <laughs> So then someone suggested we could have a different tag. We could say here here is the submission or something, right? Because it's already instead of the link or whatever. But then you know it, it's just ended up this huge bike shedding discussion. I don't know. Anyway, I, yeah, it doesn't make, to me, that whole discussion was a little weird, but yeah, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, but I think process wise, things are working okay. I don't see any, I don't see any issues right now that we need to worry about. Like we can improve it with like the bot or something, but um, otherwise, no, I think we're good. I think that was all I had. Okay. What hey. happened now here? Okay. Our comments. Uh, there is a break in five minutes, I think. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> but we have a couple of more topics here, I guess. Let me see. Oh, the, um, yeah, this break now, and then there's, yeah, and we have a couple of more things. I guess we just continue after the break, see how long we go 
I don't, you know. Or do we want to, uh, do we have anything short here for doing it a couple of minutes before the break? I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's just. It's always half been half hour breaks, so. Quarter to, yeah. I don't know. No. <laughs> Some people are still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so Wi Fi scares people. Okay, yeah. Fine. <laughs> if people are scared by Wi Fi, then I can't help. I guess I'm the wrong person to talk to. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll continue. Anyone anyone back on the on the chat so we know if we can mo we need to monitor it? Anyone there who's still listening? Um, otherwise, what was the next question? Woohoo! Yay! Awesome. Um, the question about Wolan was struck out. Not sure. Yeah. Alexei said that, yeah, go to number says. He's remote. He was doing talk remote. Okay, not bad. Um, I don't. Oh, Wolan for power on. So it's like S four or something. S five. Yeah, Wolan in S five. Not aware of that working. Um, okay, so that brings us to BH and BI. Okay. Someone is selecting it. Like yeah, someone has did control A. <laughs> Can you? This, yeah. Ex the anonymous axolotl. Anonymous axolotl. <laughs> Yeah, um, okay. It was. <laughs> I completely lost track of what's bi and what's bh and what's. Yes. Um, so. Um... 11BH and BI are two ongoing task groups in IEEE 11 working group. BH is the one that addresses issues that came from stations using random MAC addresses to existing networks, as in the network side, access point side. Uh, and BI uh, is the one that addresses uh, anything else related to uh, client privacy. Okay. And, well, user privacy and extensions, and it includes access point, not only stays. But, but yeah, for BH, I'm not sure there's really anything we need to talk about. That's based on where I think it's currently going. It's all going to be Apple things. 
yes, there may be an information element or two somewhere, but uh, I don't think we really care. It's not going to. Okay. I don't think it's going to impact any. This is the, the whole this thing with the network identifier. Yeah. Where, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if, if a station tells the AP in a productive manner that hey, it's me, while yeah, using yeah, a different yeah. MAC address, that <laughs> kind of things, so I don't think it really has any impact for anything we do in, in any interfaces. No, and not as I mean with BI, I think we're talking about doing that and then doing address translation. Yeah, but BI is really that that's much more. But for, but that's for BH, uh, yeah, I mean we, we will still use the random MAC address, so I don't think there's yeah. any really impact. And the identity would be non MAC address as well. Whatever. So I, I don't think that's really. So maybe we'll just uh, skip PAs in practice. So it's not going to impact anything. Well, if there's something that needs to be like maybe reported out from host APD to the control interface or. Whatever, yeah, yeah. If, at, if at that level. So, to, sure, sure, yes. At, at that level, there would be, yes. If someone but, but, wants but, to actually yes, implement it. Yes. Right? So nothing in kernel, but uh, yes, in upper layers in user space between components, correct. Yeah. yeah. And same in, in, in station sites, you would need to, at minimum, tell that you want to provide this information. <laughs> yes. No, yeah. we want to be because this so so this depending allows, on how it this looks, allows yeah. the station to track uh, the, the AP to track you. Yes. Well, okay, which is kind of the whole point of it, which is yeah. But but that, that is a user choice. So yeah. user needs to have an option of not being tracked. That that's really yeah. Or more more likely the user has an by default not being tracked and option to be tracked. You know, if, if we are going to be interested. Which then like IT you would set on your laptop when you connect to your corporate network. Or Potentially, whatever. yes. Yeah, so. well, 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 and if you use uh, EAP authentication or something else, anyway, then yeah, that's already really there, it. so you don't need yeah. this. This is only for the case when you don't actually have uh, authentication yeah. on real mutual authentication between devices, or at least uh, the uh, network side is not offering the uh, station. Yes, yes, yes. But regardless, so, so nothing for us to really uh, talk here beyond that. BI, that's very early. So, well, it has been ongoing for a couple of years. So in that sense, not really that early, but uh, um, exact design is very unclear. So we can't really get to specifics, but we can speculate what might happen there. <laughs> yeah. So what? Uh, well, we can say what. what I mean, we can yes, look so, at what people contributed. Yeah. So what has been proposed in so so far in BI is to hide the actual address MAC address you use from uh, over the air. Um, so so yes, it would probably would be using one time random MAC addresses for its association, potentially even changing those during an association, while still being able to use a bit longer term MAC address for things like this EIP stack so that you don't get completely confused when that uh, MAC address would be changing. But uh, that would be only exchanged in a protected manner. What do you call it in the DS? Mm, oh. There's long discussion. People get confused when you use that term, uh, well, okay. both here and in in, uh, <laughs> in, in IEEE for different reasons. But um, um, if, well, I, I'm just talking about with the CPIP upper layer stack or whatever. Well, it's not uh, for really, your for your longer hard. term for your longer term connections. Well, Mac link, link layer. Yeah, there's not a good term for that, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. So, so that's one key part. Let's just say in the Ethernet network. Yeah, sure. For, for the purposes yeah, yeah, of this for, discussion. For whatever. Um, <laughs> and uh, so that's one part. Um, the other part is uh, to be able to do. Uh, well, I'm trying to suppose the best order. Um, so the other part is to start hiding more of the information elements used to negotiate things. So as an example, as sources and request, it's the time when you negotiate most capabilities for your association. So being able to actually encrypt uh, most of that frame is another. Or all of it. <laughs> well, you will never encrypt all of a frame because no, you need but... to provide key identifier and um, packet number kind of things but yeah but the, I mean... of the most of the payload at least well, potentially all of the payload um so 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 the design would be that you do some kind of authentication first to get keys and then you can actually before associates and you have that key available and you use that key to uh, protect so this always starts hitting much closer to what we are doing here so in this case, it probably would have an impact in uh, Mac 8 to 11 at least uh, for the association frames, which we currently generate there. We kind of have similar thing for fields already existing. Yeah. So this is not anything completely new. 
and that you know, well it depends if, if it uses a similar design to hide part of it or if it just you know uses reuse but, but, sure, but, I mean, but i mean that's just the detail or, of encryption yeah. it's you, you have a key and you encrypt part of the frame so yeah sure that's a bit different but very similar um so that's one part um and for the authentication, there might be something very different from what it, what it is today. So we'll see where that goes. But that, that will likely have an impact for, for the authentication part as well. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of, well, this has been mostly on the, the, I was going to say station side, but I guess the first one kind of depends what, so that hiding may actually be also the devices in the network, not, not just the wireless device, but it could include Ethernet devices. The hiding of a MAC address, so that might might actually include yeah. hiding the MAC address of Ethernet devices, Which is not only the yeah. Wi-Fi. Um, and and um, I'm trying to think how much of the other things. Well, um, the the other one is there is a concept of uh, protecting access point uh, privacy. We'll see how far yeah. that goes in the group, but uh, protecting things like PSSID or identifiers for the AP. So it's fully so unlike uh, past designs for this one the access point side privacy is very much in scope yeah <clears throat> so in theory similar things for previous items including changing the over or potentially getting rid like ssid and you might even get completely away of the concept of ssid and psid is not any kind of long-term psid it will be changing that, that kind of changes um and and for, for 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 those changes they might not be backwards compatible so if you want that you might actually have a bss that doesn't work with uh, old uh, station devices um so yeah you said and and uh, the, and so there's a significant difference for beacon frames so this is going to be interesting to see how it works in general but never mind in our design so that assuming that goes forward that may have significant changes across our Yes, mostly management side, but I mean, it it, uh, it can impact even things like power saving and how you indicate things if the, some parts of the beacon frame are, are encrypted, for example, or something that it's not even a beacon frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess it, for, for the time being, this is more of an introduction rather than us being able to really look at the implementation, I guess. Um, it's not that there's not no approved draft text yet, so it's, it would be a bit premature for us to implement something unless people are interested in just experimenting something that might be coming out of that effort and as far as upstream is concerned i think it would be too early to even think about getting anything in at, at this point in time at least we haven't done that be ever before with the 11w so bmf we did pretty early implementations that were still changing yeah so that's example where we have done but that even that was based on at least draft 1.0 having been published. Yeah, this will take some time, I think. Yeah. It's still. Yeah. So, and, and, and. It's also this grab back, right? I mean, it's like kind of a general privacy improvements, right? So, it's like a lot of things are in scope, I feel. Um, yeah, I mean, it still is. Whether this group will end up taking anything beyond this, I do not know. But, uh, but I triple that that's limited very much in. Wi-Fi specific items, so it doesn't go to things like DHCP, DHCP contents, for example. IEDF, by the way, for those who are interested, uh, does have a work, work group working on on IP layer privacy improvements. Hmm. Okay. So the combination might be what you really want in the end, but uh, that's uh, again a work in progress. Yeah, I'm not sure what else to say about that one. Okay, that's fair. I'm yeah. I... I just see like these little spotlights. I don't actually follow the whole group, so. And we've written a bunch of contributions for it, so as you know. But yeah. Those are semi-public too, I guess. They, they are fully public. All the, all oh, the... you have to find them. It's Mim not... <laughs> sure. Um, I know they're public. But... They are publicly available without any kind of registration requirements. Yes, yes, so. yes. I'm not well. Actually, Google started indexing them at some point. Oh, but I don't know if it's still doing it or if it was just some kind of robot's text failure or something. Yeah, they are Microsoft Office type of documents, though. But yeah, so but that it, constraint. But it I'll, knows how to index those. Yeah. Though, yes. So. 
Um, right. I, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming there isn't much that we, we talk about. I mean, I, one of the reasons I was involved is that our, you know, the people working on the spec were worried about the implementation, right? So they did ask, you know, what's going yeah. on here? What can you do? What can you not do? What requires hardware changes? What doesn't require hardware changes? Um, yeah, and that, that's the other part. I mean, some of these changes, especially the AP production side, I, I, I think it's going to be requiring hardware changes, at least if you do all of it. So, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I would still be interested in being able to implement a subset of uh, BI you know, with current hardware, hardware, but the group has not clearly made their mind on that. And in theory, that's out of scope of the standardization. That, yeah, I was going to say, that also depends on what you end up sort of certifying with yeah. the, the you know, participants obviously some participants care about that some don't so of course but yeah from a pure respect point of view that's not necessarily the most uh, yeah. yeah okay so I I, yeah, I I didn't think there was anything that we needed to do about right now but still um, something worth looking at yeah I mean that may come up in couple of years I, I don't know to speculate at this point in time about the progress it's been a bit slow well, it also depends is anyone pushing it for like certification I haven't heard anything no, like, I, I cannot really discuss that no, here but so. obviously but yeah I mean there's a lot of factors I mean in, in general there's interest in privacy and improving that but uh, yeah uh, how much of that is vendor specific versus standard that remains to be seen yeah All right, so the other only other thing we have left here is the six and seven gigahertz um, issues. Um, I'm I'm kind of thinking with the power modes, that whole discussion we need to continue on the technical mailing list, the actual patch contents. So this is just a thing for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what you're talking about here is Wi-Fi 6E. Well, that's the branding name for 6 gigahertz uh, things, sure. which is starting to become available in most of the world to some, ex some extent, where most of the current deployment is on the uh, very low power front. As yeah. in, so, so, there's a, so there's a huge amount of uh, 6 gigahertz bandwidth. We are talking about in the US, it's like 1200 megahertz or something along those lines. It's a huge amount of bandwidth. Well, uh, you get to 320 megahertz channels, it starts it, to... It, it is, but I mean, <laughs> compared to existing yeah, available yeah, bandwidth, yeah. it is huge, yes. a huge, a vastly uh, larger area. In, in the EU, I think it's only half of that, about half of that. So um, I so, don't know. So, so if I remember correctly, it was around 600, five, five, 600. It's My only main... one 320 megahertz. <laughs> yeah, so, so it, it's much, much uh, less currently in, in, in EU. Things may change, but that, that's that's yeah. that's what the starting point is, and changes based on where you are. Um, but but the, practically all the current deployments are uh, on the very low power end, so there's, I don't remember what the limit is, but uh, really limited. So, assumed for close close uh, range indoor connection yeah. yeah that's kind of the use case that's being enabled i mean it's a it's an important market in improving the office home environment where you have your neighbors or whoever spending all the 2.4 and 5 gig uh, yeah. range yeah, obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously helpful but uh, uh, still quite limited uh then there's the it's, it's very low power, low power, and standard power. Uh, yeah, yeah. So then there's yeah, the low power. Yeah. I'm I, I'm trying to remember the. I because one of those is indoor only, and uh, the other one was outdoor. And uh, very low power in no LPI, low power indoor, and very low power or something. Uh, yeah, maybe it's yeah, maybe it's low power indoor, very low power, which you can use outdoors, and then the standard power, uh, which is the 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 one that uh, you need you need for real long long distance. Uh, um, yeah, 
uh, connections. And that one is going to be having interesting requirements, not radar detection, but uh, you do need to. There's, so there's com obviously there's competing technologies in this band. So that's why the very low power is fine. It doesn't cause too much issues, especially indoors. But uh, um, there are like satell satellite uh, links and that kind of things that would get very upset if you are sending uh, your uh, standard power. And standard power here actually is pretty much, it's, I think it's much more than 5 gigahertz uh, uh, transmit power. Uh, so for those, there's uh, design uh, addressing automated frequency control. That's where the AFC is coming from, where based on your location or the location of the access point, you get uh, authorization to use or not use that on some subset of the uh, uh, of the six gig band. So that's where the AFC comes from on the AP side. Yeah, not your static format. Five point seven, five point eight, is SRD. Well, that's short. Yeah, SRD is just yes. short range devices. It's just a regular yes, tool. but I mean that that's way below. I mean that's both below the six gigahertz band and uh, that transmit power is way, way below what we are talking about here in standard power. Yeah. So I'm... yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I mean, I, yeah, but from a technical perspective, again, there are some issues there that we haven't really um, worked out because, again, we have a similar situation as with the puncturing where, you know, you have the, the sort of the power mode considered as part of the, somehow as part of the, the configuration and it's different for the client and the access point and um some, some some things aren't really quite clear yet i think in the implementation but again i haven't i don't think i've actually looked at the latest version in much in depth so yeah i mean sure there's so the needs are very different for ap which really yeah. needs to care about afc and station which needs to care about uh, the ap telling it what to do or what can be done as what you mentioned is more about the i guess the virtual interface case when you might have both AP and station. So yeah. that combination is, uh, I guess, going to be interesting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I, I mean, from a, from a implementation point of view, I think we need to have that continue that discussion and I need to probably review things again. Um, the AFC, I don't think you can really care about in the open source parts. It's um, some. So to some extent, yeah, I mean, a host APD could be on the AFC client, as an example. Yeah, yeah, true. So how, it, how it really works in, in Arbiacur remains to be seen. We do care about AP side kernel interface. Sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. And, and that's what the patches are doing, right? I mean, that's what we have now. I just. Um, so, so it, it, it depends on how, how this split is going to happen. Does it push on the right? Oh, okay. So, a, AFC is a protocol where um, the, the server somewhere in the internet provides this information and the access point is the client to ask, hey, I'm in this location, can I use? Can you tell me what I can do here? And the response is actually signed by some entity. So the AP will have to verify it's uh, signed appropriately and only then use the, the, the response. So where exactly those are in the stack remains to be seen, and that may be very different based on vendor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, unless someone wants to push those down into the firmware, I'm not sure we have to worry about it too much. But. Um, I would assume some vendors will do some parts of that in firmware. Um, how exactly it works in the end, I just don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's being, it's still some of the early, but I mean, it's still, I don't think it's yet, yeah, it has not yet been authorized for use. FTC has not made their mind yet for US, I think it's probably mm. the first one. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not authorized for you today, so don't get your hopes uh yeah. being able to easily have uh is with be very low power, but yeah yeah power is not um but um but yeah, 
but we, 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 we'll see how it goes. I mean, protocol is there. I, I don't think it's publicly documented yet for AFC. I don't know. I, I have not seen it. But... Yeah, I have a tool that was publicly available, so I have to be a bit careful. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Interesting. So they, they actually do have at least some information available about that. You probably need to provide a key, but... <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, there needs to be some authorization of who can run the server, but, uh, but as far as the technical side of yeah, yeah. the uh, I don't know if the source code is available, but at least, uh, at least some information about the... Uh, yeah, well, this is available. Okay. Um, okay, so that I oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say like we. Yeah, but I think we wrapped up all these topics that we had. So I was just going to ask anyway if there were any further topics. Um, go ahead, but let's wait for the microphone, I guess. No, I give it a second. It needs new batteries. Yeah, take your time. So with AFC, the idea is that the access point should first connect to the server, download whatever list of allowed frequencies, and then start on the those frequencies. On that it can start on the other. It's just a question of how much transmit power, yeah. more or less. Yes. Uh, before, before you can start with transmit power, you need to get that approval for that at your location and time. It's called location and time, especially. Okay. The well, problem is the solving you know, when why. Oh, it's the other users of this bunch. That's not like it's, it's not like all of six is unused. Okay. There are satellite links that we have given the existing of this. Okay. There's a different difference, let's say, it's a program. Yes, yes. It, it provides different version of the ECC of uh, other users in the same frequency band. Mm -hmm. Uh, my question is more about advice. <laughs> um, we we are focused on the station uh, side. Uh, we are not uh, testing a lot with access points, but uh, we need something to test the stations, and uh, we are thinking in in some way introduce some vector errors in the in the access point site and i would like to ask you if you know if there is any tool or if there is something to test for example um calevalo approved one one patch that is was related with some reconnections and at the end a double list uh, error appears and this was only reproduced if we connect, reconnect, connect, reconnect in a manual way. So we would like to reproduce scenarios like, like that. Uh, I don't know from host APD or, and I would like to ask you for advice. Uh, if you know that is any tool or I don't know, I, I don't think so that we are the first that we are thinking in, <laughs> in this kind of testing tools. If you have some experience or I, it kind of depends what you want to do, I guess, right? I mean, yes. if you want to just kick out a client, you could use host APD CLI or... For the problem that I was commenting, the only way to reproduce was take the station to the link, enter and go out, and in that way the, the station was continuously reconnected. And we, we were doing that in a manual way. <laughs> so it's... 
<laughs> so I you need know. a screen room. Open and close the door. <laughs> yes, I <think. laughs> Well, I mean, there are. It depends on what kind of uh, budget you have. There are there are programmable. There are programmable attenuators yeah. too that you can uh, set like to you know fifty dB yeah, attenuation. Yeah, so, I mean, something. vendors do test that kind of things, but it's going to become pretty expensive pretty quickly. As in, you can have programmable attenuators yeah, between expensive. the devices. <laughs> So you can I'm actually kidding. have wires between the APN station and full control on how much signal goes through on uh, between the link. So that's one way. But um, but yeah, I mean we are doing getting expensive here. Um, and you need there, a special setup. You yeah, need to actually like disconnect. Like, but there know, are run other ways. Out the wires. You, you can actually move your station device like a robot system of some kind that has been done for roaming purposes yeah, again, getting even more expensive um, then you can control the transmit power on the ap side so it is potentially possible that you can get your station to around to where its end of its range is and then you drop the power on the ap side by 5 dp or something and suddenly you are out of range um, so, so that kind of things are available for just the the real detection of signal getting uh, weaker on the station side or disappearing in practice. Um, things that Johannes was uh, hinting at there on hostability command line. Yes, you can dis forcefully disconnect the station. That's trivial. There's a hostability CLI deauth MAC address command that takes care of that. But whether that would be able to find the issue you identified, who knows? It depends really on what, what exactly is behind the issue. So you could uh, just virtualize the whole test, right? Run hardware sim, host DPD. Uh, well, I mean, it really depends on what, where, where the issue is. If, if the, yeah, I mean, exactly. it, it could be like a firmware bug that fails if you hide, yeah, try 500 yeah. roaming cases or something. Yeah. So it, yes. it, it, if you want to get full coverage of these kind of things, you will not get that. If you want, want to get very good coverage, it's going to be a significant amount of work. So it really um, depends on the capital expense. Well, that too. But I mean, <laughs> there's a huge amount of things you can test. Uh, what one should test, I uh, really depends on the project and effort. As in, there's a huge difference between a multi million unit uh, shipment of things versus, hey, I have a, this small thing here with 1,000 devices. Uh, what's justifiable is very different, and what's really needed is probably different. So I, I don't think there's any easy good answer, but uh, if you have a more specific uh, use case, that might be discussed. But uh, I, I can also really there's work. this uh, per station tra transmit power control stuff now for some drivers. Well, some I mean, sure, but I mean, really, you need to get the peak on frames disappearing, so that's a group address frame. True. Yeah. So for True. that that very specific use case, I could try to drop the. All of uh, transit power yeah, yeah, to AP, yeah. so sure, which you can do with many drivers, you can do relatively easily. So if you want to, have it yes, for that very specific case, uh, something that doesn't require manual moving of things, that probably would be the easiest option. But even yeah. that, I mean, it's not always enough. Just five dB or something else might not be enough to cost that unless you add the very edge of the uh, of the yeah, range. You because, already have to be. Yeah, because the, the, the problem is that the, the range can be so so large. So you have different tra transmit rates and beacon frames go at low. Well, you could force the beacon frames to go at a higher rate to require a more signal to go through. So <laughs> there are things, but it, it does get more and more complex. But if you have to, if you're just trying to get that the like the one mec beacon um, uh, frame at the lowest rate, and you want to get that station not to see that. Uh, it might be that you well, might find close the screen yeah, room. You might, even that doesn't. Yeah, you work. might find that the option you have control on the transfer power is not sufficient to actually trigger that in any reliable manner. Yeah, it, it really ends up being what you know. What do you want to test, right? You can build a kind of test scenario for a lot of things, but. Um, well, I mean, there are companies providing test tools. So again, it depends on what you are willing to pay. You <laughs> yeah, you, you get uh, you can get turnkey solutions for doing lots of testing. Well, they that is software, but mm -hmm. I mean, com so commercial software. software, which usually is at pretty high price. What about the test case? 
I mean, there's lots of things you, you can run. So yeah, yes, we do have the test framework used for host API supplicant testing, of which maybe half of the test cases can, can be run remotely. I don't think it's half. Well, one third. I don't know whatever the number is, but it's more than thousand, I would assume. Maybe. But anyway, significant number of test cases. And that... you know, most of them, any actually, a lot of them can could still be run. I mean, I just haven't been added. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Like, if you wanted to do, yeah, do more, yeah. then... so, so, so so that can be done to have um, test cases where it's mostly triggered by the device itself, to some extent by messages coming from the AP. Or the station, for that matter. So, so that kind of things. Yeah, that 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 is available. Um, it requires some effort to understand how to set it up. In theory, there's some instructions, but it's not really the key solution today. Uh, and it requires that you you do have the suitable piece of hardware to be able to set that up as well. Which may I, I haven't I haven't looked how easy it is to, to do nowadays. I would assume it's doable. That requires some effort. And whether it would have caused these two you described, I have no idea. Maybe no, probably, probably, probably not. not. The idea is to create something to avoid the problem in the future. Okay. When we create well, something or create any immediately our release, we did that forever. That, is, that way we are testing Without knowing more specifics of the issue, I, I cannot claim that uh, any of this would have been able to find as a be used as a regression test for that specific item. But I mean, it's possible it could have, but I'm, uh, just without answering the full detail, difficult to say. Sure. I just wanted to share my experience because I've been fighting some Wi Fi bugs in the past, <laughs> and I can say that. Reproducing Wi-Fi bugs, it's very hard. So if you manage to find a way to manually reproduce the bug, you're already super lucky. <laughs> <laughs> because most of the time you see something in the field and then you say, okay, we want to fix that. Okay, but we have no way to reproduce it. So you just wait for the next time, maybe in a week, a month to happen again. And hopefully with the debug information that you're gathering, you're able to understand what's going on. So you're, if you already found a way to reproduce it manually, you're already at, almost there already to fix it. <laughs> Then of course, once you understand what the problem is, then you can work on reproducing the test case in a more fictional way and try to, to use it as a regression test for the future. But the problem is that with the Wi-Fi stack being so deep, it's, it's really difficult to being able to test everything and to cover everything in, in, in just a simple test with tools. So even, even if you get the tools that Uni was saying, it's not, you're, uh, my experience is that you're not 100% sure that you will cover everything and that you will find bugs like the one you just found so it's very possible you get the, the very expensive tool you go through all the tests and they say okay but actually you know that there is a bug and the bug wasn't found by the tool because they are just testing stuff differently or they're testing use cases that are not covering what you just found so like i said if you, if you found a way to manually produce the bug you're already 50 or 60 percent there so Okay. Anything else? So we adjourn. We're over time, technically. <laughs> it's almost four thirty. I I don't have any more topics. I think it was a good discussion. Thanks everyone. Thanks people on the chat and on the virtual for hanging out. Um. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Thank you. We have good notes. Now, I guess we'll share them somewhere on the wiki page or something. Maybe put a read-only link there. And um, what was that? We added a crash dump collector to our tools. Product separate partition has never deleted to which we write it. Yeah, K, okay, crash, or K dump, and either other. Yeah, yeah, that's something that works. Um, Doesn't I mean that's kind of a software debug thing, right? It doesn't really specifically Wi-Fi issues. Uh, you can talk, by the way, if you want, Matthias. But um, okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay. 
Um, all right. Otherwise, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Good session. Good day. And um, we'll see what we do next. Oh, actually, we did discuss plans for future if we have any. Plans for future, you mean meetings? I don't have any plans. Um, I, If you have any plans, feel free. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm reasonably happy with this arrangement. Um, we can have more people. We can bring in Srijit for discussing the bridge. We can, you know. Yeah, target team. Kind of yeah. Well, yearly cadence was <laughs> sort of not very yearly recently, but well, yeah. Sure, but I mean, in theory, we've been doing that for the last yeah. two years. Yeah. Um, so the problem is, you know, like uh, some people go to that plumbers and then you don't come here. So yeah. Participation is a problem. Yeah, yeah true. Um, but I'm not really sure. I mean, that kind of depends. Like if you go to plumbers, maybe you have more community participation. If you wanted more vendor participation, maybe you should tag on a day to a plug fest or something. Right. I mean, but then community attendance is, is not going to be easy or, you know, might be problematic or some, or, you know, even travel wise and things would be extra. So. And also the right people might not be at the plug fest, right? It's like a lot of, um, so that's, that's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a difficult thing to schedule or to arrange. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Just wanted... Yeah. I mean, we could, we, I mean, we did try, I think Toka was also saying like, why don't we do a workshop or, or, or a mini con at plumbers? I think last time we tried, we got like two hours and that was nowhere near enough. Um, and didn't really work so well. Um, so, you know, this arrangement with net that we have with NetDev is working out from that aspect, working out really well. Um, yeah, from other aspects, maybe not, but also here now it's been always remote. So also not bad and pretty well managed. Actually, I don't know. I, I don't have a good answer. I mean, you know, doing a separate conference all by our own, like we used to it like way back, also gets tricky with travel and everything. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have an answer. I mean, this tagging along with another conference seems the most reasonable because then it's travel wise often easier which one that ends up being for us almost doesn't matter but you know again technique like the specifics like you know how much time rooms arrangement is there online support and things like that right um yeah i don't know i one problem actually this week was that there's some festival Diwali, yeah. So that, that yeah, holidays in India, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but if you schedule around all of the holidays everywhere, I mean, yeah, it's like, <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, and then you have the Jewish holidays that move around every year. You, you have to even like look up very carefully where they fall. Um, so, which is an issue for like my team because most people are in Israel. Um, so that that's, I mean, yes, I, I agree, you know, scheduling it with Diwali was, but you know, what else do you do, right? Like you have to schedule it somewhere. And I'm pretty sure that it's not, they weren't aware of it. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. And then, you know, the other question is, would anyone actually have come? Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, yeah, I don't know. Again, I don't have any good suggestions to improve things. I mean, we could run our own. I'm sure we could arrange it somehow, somewhere, like no problem. But, you know, travel wise, that doesn't necessarily make it easier. Especially for a more community, right? If that's like a 
Wi-Fi vendor thing, sure. I don't know. Don't have any good different suggestions. But sticking to this conference is nice because next room we have other people doing not working, which are yeah. not related to Wi-Fi, but yeah. you can pull them in. If like I said, for the bridging stuff, yeah, right? For example, I mean, it was a good, yeah, for example, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not bad in my opinion. Maybe we could do some kind of smaller thing in one person or something. What do you mean smaller? You know, like it's something more like this is hard or something, so something just to meet people. Oh. Do you mean an an extra thing or something? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Because I'm just worried that you know, like we are talking about uh, deep protocol discussions and all that. Users. You mean something like the wireless extensions discussion would be, <laughs> would be better for for some plumbers or something else where you have uh, more, you know. But they're like you have bleeding edge user space people, right? They don't really. Um, I don't think you would have anyone who cares about wireless extensions there either. So. Plumbers, yeah, that's uh, kind of the point. This here, no, this one's more yeah, doing, networking in general, but yeah, it's a different different focus. Yeah. But anyway, I don't think we have a good answer to that. We'll have to see when you know the next conferences are scheduled. When we think we want to do another one, maybe. Maybe we do it again next year. Maybe we wait a little longer. I don't know. All right. So I think that's it. Again, thanks, everyone. Thank you.